No woman no cry. No woman no cry. Ilu darling, don't shed no tear. No woman no cry. Good friends we have, and good friends we've lost. Along the way, in this great future, you can't forget your past. So dry your tears, I say. <laughs> Everything's gonna be alright. 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 Everything's
And by the time we got one, it was underwhelming, to say the least. Mainly because the political move of the film, and y'all know I've said this a thousand times, was to downplay the character, turn him into something else. I think I think what I've heard it termed in this last few years is to nerf the character, right? And they did the same with other male heroes. The Hulk is nowhere near what he's supposed to be. He's a joke. And if you've seen the recent trailers with She-Hulk, you see even more so why he's a joke. I, I think they're probably doing this, you know, with the whole like pre, you know, end game or whatever, pre to where he still has the use of his arm. I don't think it healed. So I think it's probably pre, but she Hulk is stronger than him. She's more capable than him. And she just knows how to, you know, be Hulk just right off the bat as soon as she's able to become one. It's really a tiresome trope that we've seen a lot of best exemplified by Star Wars. I mean, I think that um, became the very definition of a Mary Sue even though I think the concept of the Mary Sue predated, excuse me, predated Star Wars. She became the face of it. And now I think it's fairly standard. So uh, that being said, we're seeing more of it here, right? If it's supposed to be artisan, if it's supposed to be after Endgame, I guess he's supposed to have a healing factor, but I haven't seen much indication of that before now. So I'm curious to see what they do with that or how they explain it. But this is not, that wasn't the Hulk I wanted to see, and it damn sure wasn't the Black Panther I wanted to see. And it looks like it's gotten even worse. So I played the trailer just to get it out the way, uh, in case there was still somebody out there that didn't know what it was. And you can see that there are very sparse images of Black males. Very sparse. Very few. And it's ridiculous. And it's such a disrespect. And the reason I keep saying that is because the Panther came about in a time period where comics were primarily marketed to boys. And in that market, they were primarily marketed to white boys. So black men have had a decades long, generations long, multi-generational battle for representation in comics. And that said, the number one character, now black men didn't create Panther. They didn't create him. But they spent decades making him relevant to the black community, applying him to the black community, addressing various needs and issues in the black community. Black male artists and writers fought battles, wars behind the scenes to have black male characters be more than footnotes, sidekicks, or completely absent. And when they started to actually, you know, cater this battle to other demographics, black males became relegated to background once again, but this time for a different set of reasons. For the most part, they were considered irrelevant. So we end up with this. And this, in many ways, we could have just watched the Woman King trailer. I mean, some of you pointed that out, and there's no way you couldn't because it was so in your face that this is about black women. Now, the first one struck me like that too. The first movie did. And the main reason it did is because having read the comics, the Dora Milaje were like, like the president's secret service. What war is any, that's, and what we saw later would be like if the United States went to war, right? The United States went to war and he only used his secret service to fight the war. That's what the equivalent of that was, watching that movie. It was like watching the president use the secret service to fight a war. It's not what they were. They were quasi wives and like secret service. By the time you get to the first movie, they kind of get expanded. Now they, they, they have representation on the council. Now they're damn near an army unto themselves. And they pretty much do what they want. I mean, technically when they were supposed to follow uh, Killmonger, they just, you know, decided not to. I mean, it, you know, I don't know how serious that's supposed to be in terms of what force they're supposed to represent. But by the time they get into a war, even with the other factions in Wakanda, just on sheer numbers, it shouldn't have been realistic at all that they would even be a resistance. I think it was Maccabi, was it? His force, his forces. I wasn't planning to talk about that, but anyway, yeah. So it's been ridiculous, and they've been and they're doing this obviously to cater the the, the property to black women as well, you know, and that's. I don't, I'm not opposed to making characters relevant to other demographics. My opposition 
is that you eliminate the primary demographic that the character was designed to attract. What? You think Stan Lee was instrumental in creating Black Panther because he really wanted white boys in the East Coast and Midwest and West Coast to just, you know, follow a black male hero? No, they were interested in catering to a new market. But again, that market was tailored to black boys, many of whom grew up, became comic book insiders and fought to have that character be even more relevant. Right. So when you get to Priest and Hudlin, and these cats that are doing this stuff, they're coming out of years of reading comics. And so to have this history just legitimately wiped off the map and have the character just altered. And, and I have this problem with with comic films. And I could say I have this problem in general when it comes to films. If you don't have any respect for the source material, why are you even doing it? And we obviously know it has to do with money. But at the end of the day, it's such a smack in the face to people that actually legitimately enjoy these properties. And many of these directors and screenplay, they don't have any respect for the characters. It's a cash grab for them. I rarely hear about these cats saying, yeah, I've been reading comics for years. I usually hear, oh, I didn't hear about the character until you know, I was offered the position. And then I just thought I would play with him and do this with him because it looked interesting. What? Makes no sense. And it's frustrating. And Artisan knows, we've talked about this before. I can't stand that. I really can't stand it. To me, if you don't have a respect for the genre, you shouldn't be touching it. I mean, look, when I started graduate school, they introduced us because I was in cultural studies, right? So they introduced us to this whole line of, um, you know, kind of these, these onstage productions that were trans, you know, clothing. It was like a trans modeling slash battle thing. And we had to read about it and study it and all that. The equivalent of what I'm frustrated about is if someone hired me to do a film on trans modeling, I'm not the one you want to ask because I'm going to change the shit to something you ain't going to like because I don't really particularly have any respect for the genre. That's not my area. To me, you should, if you don't have any respect for the genre and you don't know about it, have no interest in it, don't touch it. Leave it for people that do. That's my respect. That's my perspective on it. That's, you know, that's just personal. Right. And one of the things I'm also noticing about this, here's the thing. There is actually, I think, a backlash that's happening in Hollywood in regard to representations of masculinity. But it's real subtle. It's not in your face. It's not an outright battle with, you know, the, the whole woke representation kind of crew. It's real subtle. And I'm going to tell you when I caught wind of it a couple months ago or however long it was when um, Maverick came out. Top Gun 2. It and, and it's one of the things you'll notice when I I'm going to mention a couple films, but it generally takes particularly a white male who has power in Hollywood and can do what he wants to do. Right. So if you take Tom Cruise, you take Maverick. He flipped everybody off in the industry and made Maverick. And that shit was dope. It was dope. But one of the things about it is it really challenged this toxic masculinity narrative without even telling you it was challenging it. What Tom Cruise's character Maverick represented, and really, if you watch the first movie, it represented it then, too, because there were already critiques about masculinity that were starting up in the 80s. It just reached an, a fever pitch by the time we get to 2022. But what you saw in that film was a masculine figure who was an elder in the context of what he was doing. Shout out to Moonwalker for the support, right? In the context of what they were doing, you know, in terms of being a flight pilot and so on and so forth master pilot who was essentially teaching manhood sacrifice right he was teaching them how to sacrifice but then he protected his pilots to keep them from being un unnecessarily sacrificed by the military he was walking a line between challenging his students and challenging the institution that at times demonstrated no care for them whatsoever and doing so by holding up an ethic and a drive to accomplish a goal Despite fear, despite internal hesitation, despite insecurity. See, these are all traits that we assign to manhood. And most particularly the hero's journey. So here you have a master fighter pilot who's on, who's trying to juggle all of these ultimate missions to get across a point that moving past your comfort zone and accomplishing something for the betterment of all at the risk of your own personal life. That's manhood. He was actually showing us different types of manhood beyond this toxicity narrative without telling me that's what he was doing. I watched another film, another white film, really quite accidentally. This was when I had COVID a little while ago. 
I was sitting in my room and I was bored and I watched Father Stu with Mark Wahlberg. Now this is supposed to be based off a true story. And I think they kind of marketed it like you had a gangster who becomes a Catholic priest. But if you actually watch the film, it's really interesting because the Catholic priesthood don't want him to be a priest. He's a former boxer. He's kind of all over the place. He's undefined. He's kind of hard to position and he doesn't really kind of know how to characterize himself. But he ends up actually being just the kind of priest the church needed and they didn't know they needed it. And when you finally see him doing his thing, you kind of understand uh, in that way, in the, in the context of the story, why he's there. But again, going back to this theme of manhood, he's representing a different type of masculinity, unapologetic masculine behavior, but with both characters capable of being wise. Now, this is something you don't get to see as often with black male characters, but it is an aspect of manhood. This is why I used to always talk about the sacred masculine doesn't need to be esoteric or metaphysical. It just means that there are characteristics that are also a part of manhood that we often ignore. And the ability to be wise, the ability to be a teacher, an elder, a coach, this is, you know, the stern one at that that kicks your ass. Many of us grew up with that if you were a man that played sports. You were introduced to the taskmaster, the father figure who put his foot in your ass until you achieved something that you didn't think you could achieve. This aspect of manhood that's often dismissed it's something we don't see in a lot of films today. So now I'm starting to see these films pop up and they're real subtle. I, I just saw a horror film. I might get the, the name wrong. I think it was called Black Phone. And you saw a hero's journey. Young, almost preteen boy who has to uh, overcome incredible odds after being kidnapped by a serial killer. Nothing is easy. Nothing is handed to him. No guarantees about what's going to happen to him. But he has to undergo a major transformation from boy to man. To achieve it. Nothing is easy. Ain't no Mary Sue's jumping off in there. Anything he gets, he has to earn. Which most men kind of accept as an aspect of what it means to be men. Even if you don't fully know what it is, you know enough to know ain't nobody handing you shit. Those kind of narratives we don't get. And we don't get to see black men play them. Which is another reason that Black Panther becomes a slap in the face. Because at the death of Chadwick Boseman, there's a way that you could show respect to Chadwick as an actor who played the role well. I didn't like a lot of the story elements of the first film, but I never had anything but respect for Chadwick's performance and Chadwick himself. I liked him. And I'm not just saying that because he passed. I actually liked him. At least in terms of as much as how you, you know, as much as you could like a celebrity you've never met before. You know. And then by the time we found out what he was really going through, my respect for him went up that much more. But the point I'm getting at is that we don't get to see the kind of characters that I think demonstrate what young men especially need to see in media. Instead, we get this. So this is the cast, right, of the second film. What do you notice? Anything? So again, this is a character supposed to be an African hero but it's made in an American context by white men in an industry that for the most part, black men fought to make relevant to the black American experience. And now by the time we get to the sequel, not only do they decide not to recast Chadwick, although every other hero that I've ever seen in my lifetime has been played by a whole bunch of actors, especially if they're you know highly relevant, which I think T'Challa should be. You don't stop having Superman movies because Christopher Reeve died. How many people played Batman? Do we really got to go through that? It really shouldn't have been a factor. There's a way to recast the character and there's a way to show respect to the characters, uh, that, to the actors that played them. I mean, even though uh, the, Furious, the Fast and Furious franchise, they got rid of technically... Paul Walker's character. I mean, he's still alive in that universe, but they don't show him anymore. The way they showed respect to Paul Walker in the midst of the film could have been done with Chadwick, but without getting rid of the character. It didn't need to happen that way. I can't tell you what. There have been several Superman movies where they demonstrated a particular respect for Christopher Reeve, even though he wasn't in the films. 
the one with Brandon Ralph, and even even the ones came after with the music they used. The I mean, every really most Superman have been replaying Christopher Reeve since the seventies. But even when they finally tried to break from that legacy, we can debate about how much they've successfully done so. There's still been an air of respect for Reeve, even without having to say it outright. And the same could have been done for both men. But you didn't get, need to get rid of T'Challa to do it. And it looked like on the outside that they took the first opportunity they could to eliminate a strong black male intelligent leader. They already removed his brilliance in the first movie. By the second movie, they almost took advantage of his death to end the character. Now, I would think that they're likely going to replace him with Shuri, but they're kind of keeping it under wraps. So if they throw us a bone and, I don't know, bring in anything from a T'Challa from another universe or bring back Killmonger, I have no idea. They're capable of anything. I mean, I think they're going to give it to Shuri, but because they didn't show her outright yet, they might try to throw us a sideways bone. But I'll tell you this, the disrespect to the character already by the second trailer is ridiculous. The disrespect to the story and to black men. Mm. So I'm missing some of these comments. Let me quickly apologize. Sometimes it's hard to look at them and keep my train of thought. Shout out to Jeremy for the support. Appreciate that. Aaron Peters, shout out. You're welcome. You know, uh, ghetto user, what's up? Support. Appreciate that. Thank you. So hopefully, like I said, you guys will come up. Um, Justin J. Smooth. Appreciate that support. Just can't watch a Black Panther movie without T'Challa. This is Woman King Marvel version. It really is. It really is. So when you look at this picture, one of the things I see, and I said this when I posted it, uh, I actually said they got more non-Black men and Black women than Black men. In a sequel film, for the first major Black male comic book character, character to lead his own book and not be a sidekick. And that was the importance of, see, people that don't read comics don't really get how important the Panther was to black boys. He was important because he was one, he was the first major character, had his own book, he wasn't a sidekick, and was leader of his own goddamn country. When most of the time, the characters you got up to that point were stereotypical sidekicks that only showed up when they were of use to the white hero's story, they were always subject to the background. They were the joke, the butt of the joke. They were not allowed to be men. They were defined solely by the white hero's interest. So with T'Challa, there's so much to play with, right? Smarter than Reed Richards, capable of wooing Susan Richards, beats the thing in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as outsmarts, um, you know, the Human Torch. I mean, this was this this was unseen, right? So that's the importance that he has to us. So too many uh, wars have been fought in comics behind the scenes for young black boys to have a major inspirational character to look up to in a genre that was targeted to boys. One who was not just physically uh, capable, but intellectually brilliant, something they stripped him of by the first movie, and a leader of his own country coming from a line. And that's the other importance to this. It wasn't just that the Panther was an individual. He wasn't like Bruce Wayne, where he just happened to be brilliant. He actually came from a line of other black men who sired him and raised him. And he had an ongoing memory of them. Now, the film did kind of take advantage of that, right? Where he can go to the ancestral realm. And, and I like that particular aspect of the Panther. But what it meant as men, especially men who come out of a context where many of us don't even know where our family bloodlines came from on the African continent. You know how much that meant for us to be able to at least symbolically have this sense that there was a line of men that you came from. And we're talking about families that barely honor our grandfathers or great grandfathers. PhD Music says, how do we communicate to black women? This is harmful. Oh man, you gotta be unapologetic and just speak it because so many are delusional about what their, their thought process is. They ain't trying to hear you. So I'm a little, that's why I'm talking to y'all. I'm not up here trying to convince anybody about anything. I'm talking to black men because I want us to have the language to, to articulate our concerns especially for ourselves, right? Indigo says, supporting one of our formal scholars. Much appreciation, man. Okay. So, shout out to Queen, Queen Kalila. How you doing? Okay. But that was the thing. Panther was tied to a lineage of men, of kings, right? But it doesn't have to be kings. 
I mean, the more I learned growing up about my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather, I, mean, I felt a sense of pride at the kind of men they were listening to the stories about them. But here's the thing. My familial memory didn't really go past grandfathers. I got a couple scant stories about great grandfathers, but not much. And I think in that, in, to that degree, my experience was very reminiscent of most ADOS black men. We're lucky to get a couple of, you know, father, grandfather levels, and that's kind of it. So there's a, there's a limit for most black families, most particularly when it comes to the remembrance of the men, the remembrance of the father figures. We can talk about big mama and the women in your family can talk about their lineage. But when you start asking questions about fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers and great, great grandfathers, it's a small number of families that can give you an in-depth breakdown. So symbolically, in terms of pop culture, something like the Panther coming out of a lineage of Panthers that go back to the beginning of time and one character being able to go to the ancestral realm and interact with them is mind blowing. And that's, you know, eliminated with the death of T'Challa. Now, they're saying that, that uh, you know, they're going to go there. The ancestral realm is still there, but not in terms of the line we're familiar with. Right? Um, but I continued. I said, now look at how uh, many groups participate in the fight, along with white corporate elites, to make sure those same boys get nothing but scorn and disdain at the very idea they should have anything. Right. See, now, if you say boys need inspiration too, the first thing people will say is, what, what about the girls? But here's the thing. When I was coming up in the 80s, they had He-Man, Transformers, G.I. Joe. And I'm saying this because I had a little sister. You know, so whenever we went to Toy, Toys R Us, there were there were two aisles, at least. Right. There was the boys aisle. There was the girls aisle. And I love the boys aisle. To this day, if I go to a Target or any kind of store like that, I always go to the boys' toys aisle because I love that as a kid, and I just like to look at what they have, and they still have it. The girls' aisle was, like, spray-painted in pink, <laughs> you know, and they had Barbie and strawberry shortcake and all this kind of stuff. They had all these different, you know, properties for girls and for boys, and of course, you always had people that played with different things. That it, There's nothing wrong with that. But now we have a, a practice of telling the boys that any property that once targeted them now has to be turned over to everybody. But girls' properties, you don't hear much about, but those shows are still on. I was flipping through the TV channels the other day. Strawberry Shortcake is still up there. There's been no major push to make it inclusive of boys and men. So in other words, women and girls still have their properties, but they're interested in getting boys' properties too. That's what we're seeing happening. Boys have to give up ground for girls to not be sexist. Girls don't have to do a goddamn thing. And so when you talk about comics, you're talking about a genre that has historically been male targeting. It has been instrumental in helping many a boy, especially black boys, gain an appreciation for reading and learn how to express their imagination. My, that was one of the reasons that my grades were so good and in, in, in going to a public schools of K through 12. I wasn't I wasn't just, you know, some naturally brilliant kid. I was a kid that read so many comic books that my vocabulary allowed me to participate in spaces that they couldn't wait to get rid of me. You know, and I saw so many brothers put into special ed and they wanted me to be there as well. But I would argue that one of the main reasons they couldn't is because I was talented at two things, at artwork and reading. But my talent at reading came from reading comic books. So you know, more difficult concepts and terms came easy to me because of reading comics. In other words, this has actually been a space that's been instrumental for helping boys to develop. And so now the comic book industry itself, when you talk about Marvel and DC, has been appropriated by the same interests that we see the films being appropriated by, while ignoring the impact that it had and is now having in a negative sense for boys and in particular black boys who needed this. I did a video where they did a scholarship after the first Black Panther movie came out. Now, the Black Panther has not only been used to inspire boys on, on a heroic level, but it was also used to inspire boys in terms of STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, and math. What was the Black Panther a genius at? He was a genius at building things, designing things. He developed his own branch of physics in the comic books. This was designed to inspire black boys to engage in STEM. And this 
scholarship that came out, they gave it to girls. There was no institutional remembrance of the role that comics had in boys' lives or the relationship between boys and particular black boys in comic books. That institutional memory has been wiped away. And that's what, so far, this trailer represents to me. Now, again, I can't speak further until the movie comes out. But I will say, up to this point, looking at the trailer, the institutional memory of what comics did for black boys and what black boys could use it for has been wiped away. And I find it interesting because you had generations of men and boys struggling for representation. And it was basically handed to a demographic that, yeah, a few girls asked about, but I never saw girls kicking down doors and burning down comic book stores because the major characters weren't female. And now you see a whole different push, not only for there to be representation, which in and of itself isn't a problem, but to make the principal properties women. And you see it happening in the MCU. From the Hulk to Thor to Wolverine to Captain America to Spider-Man, there are female versions of all of them. Gay versions of some. I'm sure we'll see trans versions soon enough. Again, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it if there wasn't an, 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 an erasing of the impact and an understanding of how much these properties mean to boys, especially when executed well. And so now the big push is to eliminate the interest of the boys altogether. And they do this most particularly when it comes to the black community, more brazen than others. Because even though we can talk about the masculinization of women in sci-fi and in comic books, you don't see it anywhere as strongly as you do with black women. This is why The Woman King was so interesting because you had two white women writing a story, right, about these African women, all head, carrying knives and swords, fighting, dominating men and, and celebrating it. The hyper masculinization of women, we see it mostly, you know, kind of, uh, you know, thrown on to black women. And many black women eat it up. That's been happening for the longest. They're celebrating their masculinization. Meanwhile, white feminists, they still go home to their husbands, but that's another conversation. And we're seeing it here too, which is why I think more of us are seeing the linkage between Woman King and Black Panther. Of course, the Dora Milaje are based on the Dahomey and Amazons, but more than that, the removal of the masculine principle, right? Not just T'Challa, the removal of the masculine presence as if it means nothing. Very reminiscent of a battle that black men have been well aware of for decades. White men are, are coming to grips with, but black men have been fighting this battle for the longest, the removal of the masculine principle from social memory, from families, from, I mean, look at it, it, from films and television shows and talk shows going back to at least the 1980s, black men have been fighting with their institutional removal. And the use of black women as, you know, kind of um, chess pieces in this project, given baubles, given little, you know, trinkets to get rid of their own men. It's sad and it's frustrating. Anyway, I said, you know, the last thing I said about this is that black men always seem to be honored after our deaths. And then somehow in our absence, it's a kind of celebration that team, seems to take place. And we're often not replaced with another black man. It's almost like just we're removed altogether. And even if you look at this picture, you see the absence of black men, except for one. And if Winston Duke didn't do such a good job in the first movie, if they just forgot to bring him in, I wouldn't be surprised. Because Maccabi, uh, played by the brother who's in uh, the recent film, Nope, that just came out this past week, He's supposedly not in this film, right? So he's, I guess he's in a Wakandan jail and they just forgot about the character. They could have done the same thing uh, with M'Baku. But I think Winston was so popular that they didn't want to do that. But my understanding is that they're also going to have uh, a kind of scene where we get uh, Killmonger come back in. Um, hold on. Shout out to... Um, Indigo for the support. I think another one popped up. PhD music again. Appreciate that. Let's see. 
Okay, Malarkey says the anti-blackmail maneuver by our enemies, internal and external, will have the benefit of waking up more brothers than ever before to the agenda at hand. I truly hope so. That is why I'm here. Shout out to MS Delta for that generous support. Appreciate that $100 gift. It says facts, black boys need comic and science fiction role models. Captain Cisco, Captain Picard, and Jordy uh, of Star Trek motivated me to have a career in STEM. Real talk. Star Trek was all about STEM. Uh, Cody, appreciate the support. So this is the reason why the Roman Empire fell. The United States will, will soon be in that number. MS Delta again says, Captain Cisco, Star Trek, uh, Deep Space Nine was a role model for me. Black man could be a leader in space. Yeah, absolutely. And a father, a single father at that. All right. All right. What's up, Quadwo? What's going on, man? What's up, Charles? Uh, Donnie, what's going on? Dardar, what's up? You know, seeing a few people coming through. Um, so let me get through a few more things I wanted to share with you guys before I invite y'all up. So, you know, we kind of see the absence of men seems to be a priority in this. All right. Well, I appreciate that support. I really enjoy your intelligence, your professionalism, and your uh, poise while speaking on and for black men. Much appreciated, man. Cause I don't always feel like doing it, man. Sometimes I just want to start cussing people out, <laughs> but I know that doesn't go anywhere. Malarkey, appreciate that. Says no problem. Uh, replacing Superman and Batman with different actors. Interesting. Yeah. Barry, thank you for that. All right. So you have this, you know, real feminist push to make sure that the primary group represented, they represented. But here's what we're going to do next. We're actually going to go to the IMDb site. We're going to look at what information they have to bring to bear on the Panther, right? On the uh, film. First and foremost, the film's title is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So it's not just Wakanda Forever. Black Panther is still there. So we know we will see it. And we saw, you know, a brief kind of image that suggests that there will be a Black Panther. But they're keeping somewhat under wraps, you know, who that'll be. Um, but there's a couple things in this that I thought worthy to kind of glance at. So you can see the cast here, right? First mention goes to, and I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, Tana Cuerta, right, as Na Namor. And I used to love Namor in the comics, especially the Jay Lee run. That was my absolute favorite time period for uh, Namor. Love the character. He was an asshole, but he's actually super powerful uh, when written properly. Well done. And that series by Jay Lee in the, oh God, it was so well illustrated it was ridiculous so i always liked namor as a character and i actually contrary to a lot of people i actually don't mind that they're linking the aesthetic narrative and some kind of the cultural narrative of the atlanteans to the mayans i don't actually i'm not upset about that um my problem is doing so at the and adding that while eliminating black the black male presence that's what bothers me right but you can see the various characters here who will be there we got to uh, Resident CIA white male coming back, Martin Freeman's uh, Everett Ross, right? We see all the, the various black women who are coming back into their roles. One of the things I want you to take notice of, again, and a property that was designed to inspire black males is how many black males you actually see, right? So the first one mentioned, Latino, you got a white dude at the top, got a number of black women. You got Winston Duke, right? Go down a little more. Now, Isaac de Boncole, I'm, I'm, I'm going mis, to mispronounce his name. I've seen him in a bunch of stuff. I actually never knew his name. He's playing an elder just like he did in the last one. Wasn't a big role, kind of a background role, but he just sat on the council, said a few things here and there. He had the, the plate in his lip. So he's coming back. And then you see another character called Curtis Bannister. No name given to his character, which either means that he might be a surprise figure that's well known in the comics or he's just a background character that's getting some acknowledgement. You see uh, somebody named Gerald Pyro Johnson. He's just listed as Jabari Warrior at the bottom. And then next to him, Alex Alifarenko. Well, it just says Warrior, so I'm, he's probably uh, probably with the Atlanteans or whatever. But as far as black men, I saw three that were apparent black men. Except for Mbaku, the other two are pretty much background characters. Or three. Curtis is a question mark. That's it. 
So the black male presence in this property is key. And just, I mean, this is like, I don't know. This and this is this is not the greatest um, um, analogy, but it's almost like if you did, uh, you know, a nonfiction film about um, goodness. What is her name? Oh man, I'm blanking on her. Why am I doing this, man? Probably because I wasn't thinking about doing talking about it at all. Um, if you did, okay, fuck it, let's change it. So if you did a nonfiction film about the life of Maya Angelou and you didn't include include Maya Angelou and you made it about her son, it wouldn't be nothing wrong with it if you marketed it as a story about Maya Angelou's son, but if you market it as a story about Maya Angelou and it's not about her, it's a bait and switch that's happening. And this is one of the things we're seeing with the upcoming film called Till. Very reminiscent of the television show Women of the Movement that came out. It's a yet another story, not about Emmett Till himself, but about his mother, Mamie Till. And I'm a fan of Mamie Till, so I'm not upset that her character is being foregrounded. But there is a problem since I never actually saw a theatrical film about Emmett. Especially with the information we have out that came out about his father, who died in similar straits in the military in Italy at the accusation of rape. Capital punishment. That seems to me to very, be a very interesting story from father to son as a representation of the black male experience, most particularly when it comes to a, a, a accusations about our relations with white women. But maybe that'll be a background story because again, we're going to foreground women and downplay men. Now, one of the things I like about IMDb is you also get this interesting area called trivia. So we're going to look a little bit at that. And there's some various points here, right, that they cover. And I just want to remind you about one, right, at the very top. It says, Chadwick Boseman's brother, Derek Boseman, has spoken out against the idea of retiring the character of T'Challa rather than recasting. He believes his brother wouldn't have been so egotistical as to wanting the character to die with him and would instead and would instead want the character's journey to continue. All right. So I just wanted to share that. Because I think there's some importance to that. What it tells us about this character and what they're going to do with it. So again, we're seeing the removal of the black male presence and the singular focus on black women in positions of leadership at the expense an absence of men. And this is being celebrated. Over and over again, we see the same kinds of practice, the elimination of the black male image. And this is the first time in my life where I'm starting to see a larger and larger population of black men starting to voice our complaints about this. And people are shocked, even within the black community, because they're so used to a particular level of widespread silence among men that when they finally have to hear us, first thing that they assume is that we hate women. I can't tell you how many women. I think I've had three women tell me that in the last month. Well, you must hate women. Why? Well, because you say hateful things. What did I say? Silence. And it's interesting when you're accused of hating someone, but nobody pays enough attention to what you say to even tell you what you did that was hateful. It's really a disrespect in a way because it suggests that you are what we say you are regardless of what you may have actually done. As a matter of fact, you're not important enough for us to, us to even bother with whether or not you've actually done anything. Why? Because there's been a legacy of expectation that you as a black male, shut up, toe the line and do what you're told. That's what's been expected of black men. Take it, shut up. A good man, and this is something I grew up with, especially in the nationalist community. A good black man means you struggle for others. You sacrifice for others. But nobody actually has to hear you Unless what you're saying is, for the moment, useful. But if you say something that's contradictory to what they feel or what they think or what they want you to say, there's no, there's no actual listening. So black men started talking to themselves and doing so in public via social media. And it has pissed everybody off. And they have a problem with it. And they don't know how to characterize it as anything other than misogynistic and negative and all these kind of dismissive and insulting terms, because all of those things, all of those deflections allow them to not bother to pay attention to what you're actually saying. Shout out to MS Delta again for the support. 
says, why will Queen Ramona be in charge? Ruling men from other tribes would challenge to be King and Black Panther. We'll see if they uh, if they bother to give us an explanation. Right? Cody Marshall, appreciate the support. Is there talking about putting a statue of Captain Cisco somewhere in New Orleans for the Trekkies? If y'all see that, let me know. I'll be very interested to see it. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Anderson says, your calm when covering this craziness is unreal. Thank you for your commitment to the cause. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate it because I don't feel calm. J.S. Hooper, appreciate the support. Says they would never make a Captain Cisco try um, character in 2022. Intelligent leader, father, the agenda would never let that pass without trying to smother it. I'm inclined to agree. Because at the mention of Black Panther, the first thing they did was eliminate his capabilities. And by the next film, they eliminated him, apparently. But don't worry. I think I saw somewhere in the trailer where there might be a painting on a wall of Chadwick playing Panther. So we get that, I think. Uh, Quadwo says uh, some Black women have a false sense of superiority that pretends that our perspectives, even on our own lived experience, carry less veracity than their opinions about it. Exactly. Exactly. MS Delta says we're kind of becoming woman conda. It very much is. It very much is. And if you read the write up on IMDb about the film, they summarize it thusly Queen Ramonda, Shuri, and Baku, Okoye, and the Dora Milaje fight to protect the kingdom of Wakanda from intervening world powers in the wake of King T'Challa's death. As the Wakandans strive to embrace their next chapter, the heroes must band together with the help of war dog Nakia and Everett Ross and forge a new path for their nation. So understand this. In this particular film, they're already telling us that you're gonna, we got King T'Challa's loss, we have Ramonda, the queen, Shuri, M'Baku, and Okoye, and the Dora Milaje. So as, except for M'Baku, it's all women, right? And uh, Nakia, who played T'Challa much like a sucker throughout most of the film. I've never seen a film about a king who rises to power and can't even get the girl. A girl he's apparently been on and off with for years. And she keeps trying to leave him and, and just it, it, he's chasing around. It was it was fucking embarrassing because at the end of the day, that's always been the reward for powerful men who've done things and sacrifice for the nation to protect others. The very least they get is supposed to have been love and affection. So Chawa couldn't even get that. So his greatest superpower, his mind, is given to his little sister. And as far as the love and affection that most powerful men generally get, especially heroes who make it a point to sacrifice for the greater good, couldn't even get that. He turns into a 13-year-old boy in her presence. She could not be bothered. Oh, there were moments where she held his hand, but for the most part, she played him like a nuisance most of the movie. But now she's supposed to show up here, and the rumors are she's supposed to be pregnant. Now, if you don't want to hear some of the rumors I'm about to read right now, I do understand if you need to check out, but there are a couple rumors that I wanted to share. This comes from Hero Daily, and I posted this on my Facebook page a while back. So if you're not interested in hearing this spoiler, potential spoiler alert, but the only reason I don't consider, I don't consider it a spoiler alert is there's no verification if this is true. So it's more of a rumor alert. And if you're not interested in the rumor, this is the time to check out for about five minutes. So it reads, Lake Bell plays a scientist who is an original character. She and her team searching for vibranium in the ocean, thanks to a device made by Riri Williams, who they do show in the trailer, right? She's the replacement for Iron Man. So I told y'all earlier, all the primary male heroes are replaced by females. Right? Um... Namor is awakened and kills her team. Namor asks Wakanda for help, but they turn him down. T'Challa passes away from sickness. Namor wants to kill Riri, but Wakanda protects her. Riri's first suit is made out of cars, but when she gets to Wakanda, she gets one made out of vibranium. War between Wakanda and Atlantis. Shuri's mom passes away, and parts of Wakanda are flooded. Shuri makes an artificial flower to gain back Black Panther powers and gain the ancestral plane. He expects T'Challa to, uh, uh, but meets Killmonger in the ancestral plane instead. He helps her become the new Black Panther. Shuri makes her own Black Panther suit. Big war between the two nations. Shuri defeats Namor, but doesn't kill him. And Baku is the new king of Wakanda, while Shuri is the next Black Panther. Nakia tells Shuri that she has a son from T'Challa. The end. Post-credit scene, the introduction of Doctor Doom. 
who was thought to be the one who sent Lake Bell's team in the first place. And there were other sets of rumor, rumors that uh, Doom was being played by, um, I forget the name of the shock jock. Some of you guys in the comments remember his name. Long, curly, dark hair, old guy. You know, somebody's going to put it up in the comments soon. I can't recall his name right at this moment. Um, I think he spilled the beans that he might be, that he's supposed to be the next um, Dr. Doom or the Dr. Doom, whatever. Um, but like I said, his name escapes me right now. But you guys, somebody will put it in there. Yeah, Howard Stern. John Smith, I am Doom. Appreciate that. All right. E Remedy. Yeah. So that's supposed to be what we get. Well, Howard Stern. I wouldn't necessarily suggest that that's the, the best way to go, but you know, I've been wrong before because when I first found out that uh, Heath Ledger was playing the Joker, I was not happy about it. Um, and I was never into guardians of the galaxy as far as the comic books were concerned. So I wasn't thrilled when I heard about a movie coming out, but I will say in those two instances, I was wrong. Heath Ledger did a, a great job as far as I'm concerned and guardian guardians of the galaxy. I enjoyed so, Howard Stern, somebody may see something that I don't, and he may be great, but he wouldn't have been my first pick. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But, you know, at the end of the day, my biggest issue with this is the elimination of the black male principle and the bringing in of all kinds of others to play into this. But somehow, black male presence is diminished. And this is also bolstered by the fact that you have, and I will share this with you guys, because I think it needs to be shared. <sighs> you have a proclamation from Ryan Coogler himself. And he makes a statement about the making of the film that, you know, I'm sure many of you have read, but sometimes we got to put this stuff on the record because so many things come out so fast that um, we may not even remember this stuff in a month. So let me go ahead and share this particular article. I'm not going to go through it. You guys can do it if you choose to. I don't really have the patience. But this article here, right? They are way better than men. Ryan Coogler goes on tape to say women are better filmmaker, uh, are better filmmakers as Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer breaks the Internet. That's what we're looking at. So recent statement. Right? I don't, I just, I don't, I don't know. I can't. That shit is ridiculous. They are way better than men. Ryan Coogler goes on tape to say women are better filmmakers as Black Panther Wakanda Forever trailer breaks the internet. Right? So this is the kind of stuff we need. So not only are you going to have black males instrumental in downplaying the black male image themselves, but you're going to go so far as to further denigrate them. And they're not even fucking present. This makes no sense. None. When, they, when I hear people use the term simp enforcers, it really, it's hilariously funny. But it really isn't. Because Ryan, at one point, was a little boy. And I'm sure he could have used some of the kind of stuff we're still calling for here. All right, but this is what we get. This is what we're getting. Last thing I want to show you, and I want to share this with you guys, for those of you who have never checked it out, I did a review of the original Black Panther. I did a blog article. I'm going to put it in the chat. I try to remember to also put it in the description box. And the reason I'm bringing it up now is because it also um, covered, let's see, I might have to pull it out somewhere else. Hold on. Eh. Strangely enough, I got a million screens and they're still not enough. Yeah, it looks like a spaceship in my studio and I still, don't have enough screens. All right. 
So if you haven't had a chance to see this, this is a piece I did a while back. And it deals with my thoughts on the original Panther film. And the reason I'm bringing it up, bringing it up now is because I think there's some important parts to this that are relevant. So I did this in 2018, right? And I covered a few things. Right? These were two boys that wanted to see the film. Remember when I was telling you that this, uh, you know, these comics are extremely important, especially to boys? Well, this is another way you can tell. So these boys were trying to get into a showing of Black Panther and they were so excited about doing so, <laughs> they wore a trench coat to get in. I just love it. But again, it speaks to how much boys needed this, right? So I cover a few things. I talk about a number of different, uh, you know, issues around black men. But one of the reasons I'm bringing it up now, because for those who are interested, I cover a very brief overview of the history of comics and the history of black men fighting for space in comics. And I start with 1947, all Negro comics as a beginning point. And I don't think it's the sole beginning point, but I think it's a pretty relevant one of trying to create stories about black men in comics for the sake of boys. But yet and still, all of this legacy is dismissed in the excitement of replacing boys altogether, or at least ignoring them to a great extent. So for those of you who are interested, I'm going to drop the link. And if you want to come up and share your thoughts about uh, the Panther, about the Wakanda forever, um, please do so. And if you're not interested in coming up, we can close everything down and I'll look for your thoughts in the comments on the film. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to add this last piece there for you guys to check out because I think the, the, the battle for male representation, black male representation in comics, people kind of dismiss, I think. They kind of water it down and, and make diversity a thing where any and uh, anyone other than white males are somehow this amalgam called diverse. But black men in particular have fought for a very particular space. And to see that erased and watered down and dismiss, dismissed altogether is frustrating for me. And as the father of a boy, I can tell you in particular, it's extremely such because I've talked about this from years past as well. It was really hard finding major films where black men could be represented in an inspirational manner for boys. Okay. Got a few brothers in here. So, um, hold on, let me be mindful of the mics as you guys are coming in. Names up for display. And I got to start with honoring my boy Artisan. Um, First and foremost, how you doing, Artisan? I'm doing okay, Doc. How are you? Doing good, man. Glad to see you up in here, man. I oh, appreciate you doing this. You know that. You know, hey. you know I needed to hear hear your thoughts on it because you were going to go more in depth than me cussing and fussing about it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I was cussing and fussing before I hit the button. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was trying to be, I was trying to add something to the conversation, but I didn't want to do more than cuss and plus my damn self. No, nah, that last piece you just dropped with Kugler, that article, you got to send me that article because he, he, oh, he way off code if he said that. He is way off code for Oakland. Oh, no, not for the Bay. Not, <laughs> bro, went, what is you doing? <laughs> you went there, man. You yeah, after, as a matter of fact, I'll put it in the, uh, in the chat right now. So you guys can have access to it. But yeah, this is the, this is the links that, you know, me and others are willing to go to further denigrate black males in a space where we're already denigrated. But right. tell us, give us your thoughts on this, man. What do you think? Well, I told you my whole my whole thoughts on it when I did um, my reaction to the trailer right off the bat was that they shrunk the name that Black Panther and it just became more Wakanda forever and less of the Black Panther. I said, well, that's psychologically, that's telling you what they're going for right there, right off the bat. Because you advertise what you want to highlight, and what you want right. to highlight is everybody else, and not the Black Panther. So, you showing the whole cast. I knew who was on the cast, but I wasn't looking at it like that. I'm just looking at who I'm seeing in the trailer, just like you were. And I'm like, okay, I saw three males, one of them black. Everybody else is 
female. So is this just, you know, Wakanda? Is it, yeah. you know, world of Wakanda? Like they initially said it was going to be, or what are we getting? What is yeah. this? You know, so it really was disappointing to me. And while everybody else was all jazzed about, oh, we got a trailer. I'm looking at the trailer, shaking my head like, dude, I don't really care. This don't look like nothing I really want to see. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Awesome. You know, <laughs> you know, diamond, mm -hmm. diamond crap looks beautiful, too. But it's still crap. <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, come on, man. What's going on with this? This is really becoming really worrisome for me. And after that, you know, love and thunder crap that they just took on me last month, it's still like, yeah, I'm just waiting for you to do it again. You just you you got to do it again. You got to pull the hat trick for the rest to end the year on, right? <laughs> I mean, and and when you see the screen like this, mm -hmm. it really it really gives you a sense of how you know how prominent this is. And this is like looking at again. We talked about the woman woman king. This yeah. is like looking at that. Yeah, it's it's such a a, a brazen slap in the face to black men. You know, yeah, it is because that if that's the cast that they want to show. It's topping it off with the dude that's playing Namor, even though he he's a new actor and a new character in this franchise. Mm -hmm. So that means he's getting paid more than Winston do, right? He, you mean he's he's getting put paid more than Angela Bassett, or you just wanted everybody to see him first, right? right. Same thing with um, uh, Martin Freeman, right? But mm -hmm. the one character that's curious on here to me, though, Doctor T. Is this Curtis Bannister because they don't list his name? Right. Right. And I'm looking at him in this picture and his stature. I said, well, maybe he could be the Black Panther. He could be a Black Panther from throughout the multiverse because he's skinny enough. <laughs> he's skinny enough for that last picture. Okay. That's so, right. And they're not listing his name. I mean, if you can go all the way down to list to some dude that's just a warrior. Which is like a generic title to say, you know, exactly. man next to man number one. <laughs> they just leave his name out. Okay, so maybe he's a Black Panther from from the multiverse. Maybe that's how they pull it off. Because I'm thinking they're gonna do a bait and switch. But be mindful. Whole... Be mindful of what you guys are doing. Um, on you know behind the scenes because we can hear you through your mic. So I don't know who's who's doing that, but just kind of be mindful of that. Um. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. What was the last, the last thing you were saying, Arson? No, just just the last thing on it is he's really curious to me because you know I try to go to stuff fresh. I don't want to overload on too much of the information, so I didn't look at the rest of the cast list. But seeing that, you know that that could be telling for who he is in this movie because right. he's named. That means yeah. he's paid. He might got some speaking lines, but they're not saying who he is. That means that could mean something. Yeah, it might be a bone because look, I think mm -hmm. I think they knew that black men were going to be up in arms at this. Oh hell yeah! You know, and so I think this might be a little bone that they throw at throw at us to to, to shut us up um, because they're getting blowback already. So yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, they they are they are. I mean, as much as everybody was was crying and snotting at the trailer and stuff like that, I'm sorry, I'm I'm coming to a Black Panther movie to see a Black Panther, and if you telling me Black Panther is dead and Maybe we'll give you another one, but you're not gonna recast T'Challa. I don't know what you're doing. What you think I'm coming here to watch? Yeah. Don Elaje? No, I know who they're supposed to be, and I know who they are in the MCU. But I'm not watching the movie with the Don Elaje. I'm coming to see Black Panther. Right. So this would be like going to a Superman film, and Superman isn't in it, but we're, the whole film is about the women from Krypton. Yeah, it's just it's just Lois. It's the Lois movie. Well, <laughs> Lois and some chicks from Krypton, and yeah. And and if you don't support it, it's because you hate women. So yeah. I'm supposed to I'm supposed to believe that a guy like Namor in the comics, who frequently slap box with the Hulk, mm -hmm. Blue Marvel, a, don't forget, huh? I said in Blue Marvel, that's his homeboy. And Blue and Blue Marvel's his homeboy, and they they spar with each other, so they're comparable in po in physical power. And somehow, some computer geek who it should not be her ability to be that damn smart is going to stand up to a powerhouse like that. You, yeah. you, you know what? I've written better stuff sitting on a toilet, man. <laughs> I, I probably have. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm just looking at it, and I'm, I'm just hoping, like, Mr. Coogler, I'm giving you the side eye if, 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 
if we don't get another T'Challa, man, I, I'm not going to support you anymore until you let this abomination to go forth. If we don't get another T'Challa, can't do it. Okay. Well, here's how this is going to go, because apparently we got a lot of people in the queue. Um, and some of the, some of the brothers up here I've known for years, so they're welcome to stay up. But if you know if some of the others, I want you to get your comments, and I might have to you know push you out and bring somebody else in. But uh, let's go ahead and start with Oliver the Third. Give us your thoughts about this. Yeah, thank you for uh, speaking on this. I'm, when I saw the trailer, I was I was hoping that somebody would speak on this because I, I I was I was frustrated, and the cats who I was talking to were all excited about about it, and. Yeah, I was just like, man, we're we're losing our way. And honestly, this is this is not something that's unique to black men. Mm-hmm. This attack on masculinity has been going on. Like you saw the white guys being upset, rightfully so, about what happened with Thor. Uh, the He Man reboot that they did on Netflix barely oh. had He Man in it. Yeah, you know I mean, it, it had Tila going on. So like they they've been pulling these tactics. And and after that Thor movie, I told my brother as we were leaving, I was like, I'm scared about this Black Panther movie. Because mm-hmm. I, I just smell the tactics coming, you know, and, and when I saw that trailer, you know, everybody was trying to hype it up and talk about beautiful, how beautiful it was. What I saw was M'Baku looking confused. Exactly. Right. Staring at something, just looking confused. I saw the women crying. And then I saw these white guys with machine guns pointing them at groveling black men in the boat, you know, <laughs> and exactly. then I saw. Uh, the black girl magic with Riri Williams. She's doing the Iron Man thing, right? And she's oh. giving the dap, you know, to Shuri. And then they're all, all the women are getting amped. And obviously, Angela Bassett is in her moment. And I was she's just like, okay. on her throne. I saw a number of yep. Minaji sitting on what looked to be like a council of thrones. I mean, so yep. you're seeing women in positions of power and an absence of black men altogether. Complete absence. And there was a council in the previous Black Panther movie that had all these different. Other uh, tribes represented, but plenty of men, but none of them I saw in this one. I didn't see the dude who had the the thing in his mouth. You know what I mean? Like uh, the the plate in his mouth, who was on the council in the last episode. So all all the the mythos and mythology that they had built up with this huge exciting world uh, and these different councils, none of that was there this time. It was just Angela Bassett on the Iron Throne. Yeah. You know, and surrounded by the door. And one of <laughs> one of the cats in the comments made uh, in the, your chat made a comment about uh, uh, let's see what kind of lesbian stuff happens in this one. <laughs> and I know, I know, in the comics, in the door, in the comics, yeah. they they pulled that with the door or whatever. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I, was, yeah, I, mean, I didn't even the, think about it, but yeah. No, and the Dora was supposed to be wives of the king, mm. right? But you can't, you know, you can't have that narrative in Western, you know, uh, Western projects like this where. A king can have sexual access to however many w- women he wants. That has to be overturned. So, you know, uh, surely, you know, by the time you get to the comics and you start to see this kind of lesbianism amongst the Dora, it's not surprising at all. Right. You know, in a, in a weird kind of way, it even takes me to, to Harley Quinn, where you have this yeah. character that people really dug in the 90s because she was so dysfunctional and had this really problematic relationship with the Joker. But, you know, by the time we get to this era, we got to somehow make her a hero. She has to fight yep. for herself and all of that because the story of having a woman be vulnerable like that to someone like the Joker, we just can't have that anymore. But that's yep. actually what made Harley interesting back in the day. So yep. it's she, kind of she thing was sexual too. Is vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's, she's very much gay in, in the new cartoon, uh, the Harley Quinn cartoon. Yeah. She's getting it on with Poison Ivy. So, they, you know, we've been seeing this. But I'll, I'll say one thing because I know you got a lot of cats here and I want to listen to them all. Um, but in uh, the What If series with the one with Killmonger, right? They went out of their way to not just make him into a villain, totally right. disregarding everything that he was, you know, fighting for in, in right. the movie, but also at the end, kind of implying that he was going to be taken over uh, by the Dora and um, who was was it Black Widow who was there? One, one of the uh, Avenger chicks joined, I think it was like Pepper Potts or you something like that. Pepper Potts and, um, Cherie. Yeah, right. And they were going to go overthrow him. And I'm just thinking, hey, there's no black men in Wakanda. <laughs> yes, I, right. you know I mean, yeah. like, so right. the shenanigans are on another level right now. Well, They're on what 10. You, what you notice, though, and I've said this before, um, when you look at Mbaku's region, they seem to be male led, mm-hmm. right? But they're also presented in the Wakanda by Wakanda as being kind of backward, right? Yep. But when you look at Wakanda, you know, you do have a male king. 
but there's this staunch kind of women's presence there and it's only been blown out of proportion by the second film we can see that just in the trailer but the, i think the problem with mbaku and his like you don't even see the women there mm-hmm. right and i think a lot of people took issue with that but i appreciate you for coming up oliver thank you yeah I'll see you again. Go, Good stuff, all right man let me go ahead and let uh quincy get a word in quincy what are your thoughts about this Hey, what's up, Dr. Uh, Dr. T. Fine, man. How you doing, man? Thanks for having me. Hey, how about you? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Hey, I just got want to make a just a couple quick a couple quick thoughts. Um, first off, I think Ryan, as far as T'Challa goes, Ryan Coogler was the worst choice anybody could have made at this point. I think that's pretty clear. Anybody in denial at this point? I mean, the writing's on the wall. We saw it in the first movie. I mean, he he was T'Challa was the man in Civil War. And after that, it's been all downhill ever since. Um, that, that's just, you know, that's my first thought. My second thought is um, I'm just confused by seeing brothers, you know, a lot of blurs, <laughs> like co-signing this. Um, and even even back when they first announced the um, decision to not recast and kill them off, I was genuinely confused, like seeing so many black men being OK with it right after they were celebrating the the significance of having him and finally getting him in the MCU, you know, so that 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 still to this day kind of don't sit well with me. Just kind of confuse confuse me. I'm not even sure if anybody has any insight and well, maybe they, why. No, I've I've heard that, and I guess we lost Artisan. Damn it! Um, I hope he comes back in. But no, I heard the same thing, and the and the retort is always, well, she was, you know, sure he was was Black Panther in the comics, and it's mm-hmm. like. Yeah, but first, T'Challa was still alive, and he became king of the dead, so he reached a whole nother level of authority. But you gotta, you gotta understand this, Doctor. Not only did he have authority over the dead, he had authority over every previous Black Panther before him. Right. You gotta, you gotta look at how they nerfed him so incredibly. Yeah. And and let's let's like I said in the chat, let's tell the truth. Sherry didn't do that much shit when she was Black Panther. She was briefly Black Panther. Right, you, right. It was, it was just, it's like if you make a smidge on a paper, that's it. No real impression. Well, and if you watched her, especially if you saw the uh, BET animated uh, Panther film, which they basically made out of panels of the, the comic that they came out with under Reg, Reggie Hudlin, yeah. um, she was an annoying little sister. Yeah. And if you had a little sister, it was entertaining as hell because she was the you know, quintessential little sister to T'Challa. But she wasn't out fighting him. She wasn't more intelligent. She was no. just his little sister. No. But to give her his brilliance to her, to me, was, was you don't need to change the character. Because again, we've never had a chance to enjoy the character in live action before. So he gets, he almost gets neutered before Black men even get a chance to revel in the fact that we finally get to see him hit the screen. I mean... Yeah, that's, that's far from me. But any closing closing thoughts, Quincy, before I let you go? Yeah, one 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 last thing. Um, this this whole situation for me reeks of just follow me in my comparison. It it reeks of the like the Barack and Kamala comparison. I remember seeing somebody saying, "Why aren't black men um, excited about Kamala?" Right, mm-hmm. and my first thought was, "Black men aren't reflected." in Kamala's life, right? Now, mm-hmm. back with Barack, you had you had his mother-in-law, you had his wife, he had his kids. So, of course, everybody kind of, you know, reveled in, in it, right? Because we all had a place in it. But with Kamala, that wasn't the case. And in comparison with the first Black Panther, everybody had a place. The OGs with Angela Bassett and Forrest Whitaker, the newcomers with the youngins, the, the current uh, heavy hitters with Michael B and whoever, and even across the diaspora. Um, it was hitting all each each um, African Americans, Caribbeans, Africans. It was hitting everybody, and mm-hmm. now it kind of swung from all of that to black girl magic and people of color. Right. And that's my closing thoughts, man. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that because you you have this attempt to cater to people that don't have any investment in these projects. They don't even have any skin in the game, and all of a sudden they get priority over the generations of black men who fought for space in this area. That's why I showed you the clip from the piece I wrote, because, you know, you can go back to 1947 and see black men fighting for space in comic books. Right. It's been going on multi-generationally. Anyway, appreciate that, Quincy. Um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and go to uh, uh, Wesley. Hey, hey, Doc, how you doing, man? Well, how about yourself? 
I'm doing all right, doing all right. My first time talking to y'all. I've been listening for a while, man. Mm. So I really appreciate the time, man. It's it's this is very disheartening mm. to um say it lightly. Um, this is the only space in which I hear this particular rhetoric going on about this trailer and, and just the, the films in general, because everywhere else I, I go and listen to what's the complete opposite. So I, I've been feeling crazy mm. be having these thoughts until I uh, until listen to your stream. Okay. Because even when, even when they dropped the title for the sequel originally, and it was Wakanda forever, right. there was a, there was a, uh, this this tingle, this little weird, yeah, you know, uh, like pause. Like, why is it called this? Right. Why is it so separated from yeah. the character? You know, why why do they vague it up like this just to call it Wakanda Forever? Mm -hmm. When that's no real representation of the of of the character specifically, it's just this vague overtone of okay, well, this is this is this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, it's, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I mean, I, I didn't, I, I didn't really, I, I was hoping that it wasn't going to be something like this, but it, you know, it's, it's just very weird that it ended up being something like this. Mm -hmm. And, I, I, man, <laughs> uh oh, did we lose you? Okay, I think we, I think we might have lost uh, Wesley's uh, mic. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead and give us your your closing thoughts about that, and I'll let uh, the brothers up here respond. Oh, looks like we lost him again. All right, brother. Well, appreciate that. Anybody want to respond to anything he raised? Uh, Marcus, anybody else? What's going on? I don't know if y'all can hear me good. Can you hear me good? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, because I got a funny signal over here. Man, listen, I've been going back and forth with people about this all day um it's always people that don't read these comics mm. it's always people that don't read these comics and and you know they watch these movies and their first impression of these characters are the movie version mm. right 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 you just got a comic book correct batman movie mm. Right? You just got that. They made a big fuss about it. You understand? They about to, I guess, do a whole trilogy of that. And that's not a problem. And I'm sure this point that I'm going to make has been made earlier or made before. But how many Batmans did we get? Right. right. How many Spider-Mans did we get? Right. How many Supermans did we get? Mm -hmm. This is probably the first time ever, ever, that we lost an actor that played a comic book character and they decided to kill the character that he's playing. Hold on, right? let me, Wesley, I'm gonna take you down. Uh, so I appreciate you coming through. Um, but something you said, Marcus, that I think has to be, you brought up Spider-Man. We just saw three damn Spider-Man in the same movie and it was one of right. the best movies of the year. So right. how is it that we can't have new people play the same character? See something exactly something that uh was it was it was it uh, uh Officer Faulkner said that uh something about you know getting a new Black Panther through the multiverse. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, that was me. I, I I did not think of that, and I'm mad that I didn't. Mm -hmm. So shout out to you, bro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a that is a dope argument to anybody who's oh, because the comic books this and the comic, and they never held a. Let me let me tell you, bro. Most of these people talking the most trash on comic books were corny and nerdy and all this other stuff. Now, uh, now you 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 want to be part of the conversation, right? May I add something real quick? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, not just that. They look at the X Men films. How many actors are playing? the same character they're already trying to determine who's the next wolverine's gonna be i see right, people talking right. about scott eastman i see right, people right. talking about tom hardy i see people talking about the 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 british guy that played in the first two kingsman movies and who just right. did the rocket man movie right so 
how how many versions have we got? You you saw three different Cyclopses in those films in exactly. one of X Men Origins. You saw Ty, who's been in the recent X Men movies, and of course you had James Madison. My that is my biggest problem is what is wrong with recasting him? You know that's just this, 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 uh, this is why uh, the uh, subtitle for the video today you can see on the thumbnail is "Eating Off the Carcass of Dead Black Men." They took the death of Chadwick and they used it to justify his character's elimination from the story. And that was so unnecessary. That's disgusting. And if they are going to replace him uh, with this Curtis Bannister or whatever, I do hope they use a named actor that we've seen in other things. I do hope so. I don't want a completely new face per se, but the use of Chadwick's death to justify this removal, I find reprehensible. Personally. That's no different than looking at that's no different than looking at the Disney Plus She Hulk series. Mm-hmm. And somehow they're gonna make literally Marvel's strongest character take a back seat to a chick who's only had grand gamma rays for a cup of coffee. And she's stronger <laughs> than him. And something tells me they're gonna go there. So the another thing I was gonna say is um Earlier, I, f- I don't know the guy's name. He said that what he found, you know, disturbing and troubling is, you know, black men co-signing this, right? Right. Um, you know, because I, you know, I, I, I got this guy on my timeline. You know, I got a couple guys on my timeline. You know, oh, misogyny and blah, 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 blah. Right. My thing is, you got enough black female characters. In the in 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 Marvel, if you want to show strong black women, right? Mm-hmm. You have them. You don't you don't have to eliminate the black male characters to do that, right? The, 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 these guys who are co-signing this, it's just it's just more of what we're already used to. It's this worship. It's this you know this 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 idea you know that we grew up with you know this image of empowerment and yada yada, yada. so we've been trained into this 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 thing and you know this worship we we worship black women mm-hmm. as men we worship black women and you know when they are put into these uh these roles uh, you know we see these images um and I, when i say we i do mean the masses of black men you know on on you know the majority i would say I would comfortably say the majority of black men worship this idea of black woman as a damn deity, to be honest. Okay. And that's and that's that, and that's why they accept it, in, in my opinion. But here's the here's the thing too with this thing. Um that you know, Marvel and um uh you know DC is doing this as well, but this push to you know foreground, you know, women, especially in terms of the Black Panther mythos. You've seen this in the comic book industry and artisan can tell you how many books that they've restarted and restarted and restarted to try and generate interest in this right they want you know the dora milaje books that they come with how these books sell is an indication on how much people actually want to see i mean to me if you that bold with it go ahead and release a, a, a dora milaje film but don't make a black panther film without t'challa in it and then pass the suit off to someone else and say, well, technically it's still a Black Panther film. No, you know, actually listen to what people are willing to put money towards. And that's one of the things I'm seeing across industries. They keep investing in projects that nobody asked for and they don't financially and people don't purchase. I mean, this is one of the things we're seeing with Thor, the, the, one of the worst three week drop offs ever. And nobody and they're still making these films. You know? Yeah, I, um, I don't I don't understand how. Yeah, you know, how Hollywood, even with all the incentives that me and you spoke on, with all the money that they're losing doing, you know, uh, you know, and, and you can look at all of this stuff that pushes these narratives. They know that, you know, superhero movies, comic, comic book movies are, you know, a, a male, it's a male supported genre. Mm-hmm. Star Wars, same, same thing, male supported. Mm-hmm. It's It's this kind of like WNBA approach and Mm -hmm. and you know all of this stuff loses. You know all of this stuff flops. But you know why it loses though? Because women don't support it. No, Bill Burr 
Bill Burr was absolutely right. He said, when the NWA, WNWA is failing, we don't look at women. We blame men for its failure. It's even though the male NBA funds it, but women don't support it. If you, right. if, you know, and, and that, and that does include comic book movies. Now I'm not saying women don't support them. They do to an extent, but that's, this is, see, this is the project, the problem with making projects without asking women if they even want it. Right. If you don't even bother to poll women to see what they want, because you know what women do watch? What's all the, the, the wives of y'all know them better than I do. These reality shows that are on, they watch that. <laughs> yeah. They watch see, that. Listen, these, they, they don't want it because they want it, you know, or to, 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 to consume or to enjoy. They want it to exist for its own sake. You know, my, my magazine that I do with the with the female models in it, I've had girls come to me and say, hey, uh, Marcus, why don't you create a magazine with men in it for women? I said, because y'all won't buy it. I've yeah. been saying that to them for years, for yeah. years, since I've been in the publishing game. I said, you won't buy it. You know who will buy it? LMNOP. That's who going by. Well, yeah. Um, I need to get some people cycled uh, out. So I'm going to go ahead and give uh, Gavin a chance to share his thoughts. Um, and then we got, because we got a couple people waiting in the queue to get up here. So those of you who are in the queue, just hold tight. Uh, Gavin, you, tell us what you can doing. You can drop me down, uh, Dr. T. You can drop me down. I can come back. You want to, I, because I, I still want to hear you on this. So I'm okay. okay. Right. Go ahead, Gavin. Okay, um, when I saw the trailer, I was just like, oh my gosh, I was really bummed out. I couldn't believe they could make another movie that actually was more woke and feminist than Thor, Love and Thunder. Okay. And that's saying something. Right. Then you have the fact that, all right, Mbaku, I believe he's just going to be a figurehead. He'll probably just be there maybe five minutes out of the entire movie. Kind of like in a horror flick, the Batman's the first one to go. That's why I see it. Okay, so it's ridiculous. I believe with Mbaku, I believe he'll probably have maybe five minutes in the movie and then he's gone. Okay. He won't be featured. Okay. Now, yeah. and again, it, it, a symbolic gesture to the frustrated men. But but part of the issue, I think, is there's not even a serious listening. There's not a serious reflection on what men may be frustrated by. And that goes with uh, Thor as well. You know, uh, there. I don't think people are actually listening to what men are talking about because this shit no. really with if you look at Thor, to me, it started with Ragnarok. By the time I'm seeing um, uh, what's her name? Um, oh, my goodness. How am I blanking on her name? She's the she's supposedly the king of Asgard right now. Says the Thompson Valkyrie. Valkyrie. When I saw Valkyrie tossing the Hulk around and here's the thing. When I saw Valkyrie hit Thor with a, a, a stunner, what do you call it, a little electric stun uh, gadget or whatever. This is yeah. the, supposedly the god of thunder. And you're telling me that electricity is going to stun him. She tossed him around, then she's wrestling with the Hulk, and I'm just looking at this like, really? yeah. what, what are we talking about? There's, mm -hmm. So there's no sense of, of masculine presence now. You have to downplay that completely. And, and so when I'm looking at this, I'm saying this is the kind of thing that men are starting to respond to and they're not listening. But this is also the reason that you're getting these Top Gun 2s, these Father Stews. You're getting these other movies that are slipping in under the cover of yep. night, And they're challenging the dominant perspective on male toxicity by showing different representations of manhood. And I think it's going to culminate in a more a direct response, but it's real subtle right now. But you, give us your closing thoughts to this, Gavin. Closing thoughts. Um, I already have none that said, dang, how worse can it go from here? Oh, man. you, you We're going to find out. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate you coming on up, man. Thank you. Okay. Um, so anybody want to respond to anything Gavin put out there before we go to uh, Scott? Anybody have any thoughts you want? Okay. Uh, Scott, go ahead and tell us your thoughts on this. Okay, thanks for having me on the show tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sure if I was even going to comment on it. I, I kind of pulled out an MCU kind of a while ago. Like, yeah. I mean, you kind of see the agendas, and 
I mean, the main thing with me was like with with Disney, like how they did Boyega and Star Wars. It was just kind of hard for me to go back to giving these people my money. But when I when I watched the trailer, the the thing that was the most unsettling to me was something that you touched on was the fact that they're using this to kind of capitalize off of Chadwick Boseman's death. Mm. And um, I think that they're going to use that. I mean, because Kevin Feige was on the red carpet talking about how this is going to be a tribute to him, despite the fact that he ob- Chadwick Boseman obviously wanted the character to continue. His brother said he wanted the character to continue. I mean, one of the things I remember most about Chadwick Boseman was when he was on Sway and he was these young boys with cancer and how how much he was moved to continue because every we all know that he had cancer while he was filming it. And for yeah. him to to break down in that interview when he was talking about how much yeah. the, the movie meant to those young boys and yeah. other young boys, like you said, that want to do STEM, it's just really kind of disgusting. And I, I just feel like we, we as black men kind of need to raise our standards because like a lot of the other brothers were talking about how, you know, they're kind of surprised how other black black people are supporting this. I'm not surprised by it at all. I mean, it's like all you have to do is go and look at the the uh, the comments on the trailer. Everybody's talking about how emotional they are. About it. I mean, the only people that were really talking about um the uh, recast the Chala was that one brother, I- Iman, I think, on YouTube. And like Van, they used to be on um, TMZ. Everybody else is just kind of going along with the agenda, lockstep. So we we kind of have to be willing to challenge, you know, Reginald Hudlin, who created Shuri. That was a terrible idea. Um, we have to challenge Ryan Coogler, who's going along with these agendas as well. He's obviously, you know, somewhat of an agent. Well, um, yeah, but he's been. He, they've said, you know, apparently the cast uh, has talked about him being a male feminist even in the first movie. But the thing mm-hmm. is, Hudlin's Hudlin Shuri, his version of Shuri wasn't bad. She was just she was the little sister growing up in the shadow of the perfect. Mm-hmm. And and so when you saw that in the comics, the, the way they kind of wrote it was actually quite interesting in terms of sibling rivalry, and they would j- chide each other just like we saw in the first movie. That part of it brought a three dimensionality to T'Challa that I liked. He's a big brother, you know. He's mm-hmm. son, but he, you know he's the golden boy, and then he's got the sibling that's always a little bit of a mess up compared to him. And it created some interesting kind of tension. But it wasn't until the film that you got the Mary Sue Shuri that supposedly right. all the best characteristics of T'Challa for herself, and he's just this guy running around in the suit and can't get a girl. Mm-hmm. But you know, but I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Uh, chiming in on this uh anybody want to respond to some of the things scott brought up yes yes absolutely um i've been saying for a while I'm take, now i'm gonna take you down scott but i appreciate you coming on up go ahead mark okay thank you i've been i've been saying for some time that i i, I wasn't a fan of ryan coogler i've been okay. saying that for some time and uh you know all the things that i would hear him say in interviews and things that you know like that you know it it sounded like simp talk to me from from the very start. So when I, you know, when I seen the movie, it didn't surprise me. And you know, like he said, it doesn't surprise me that people are falling in line. You know, whether it be, you know, like I said before, you know, in our culture, we worship, you know, uh, black women. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, how, liberal Hollywood. I mean, you 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 have to if you're gonna say anything at all, you got to speak positive, especially with this type of film, mm. you know, with it, with it being black women, like who, who's really going to come out like of, 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 you know, you know, like a reputable person, like an actor or anybody in the industry and speak out against this. It, you're, you're automatically the villain. If well, here, but well, here's the, here's the importance. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm sure there are other films, but these are the two that are just on my mind because I saw them recently, or three. So again, Black Phone, Father Stew, and, and Top Gun 2. They're not saying anything about woke Hollywood. They're not saying anything about feminism or women. What they're doing is focusing on presenting a good story. With the right. And that's, I think, so I'm saying the danger, not the danger, but the power of these new films coming out that are showing masculinity in, in a wider frame than just toxicity, what right. they're really saying is that the way to confront this shit is to focus on good storytelling and allow men to be the diver- diverse range of men we actually already are. That's So they're giving us the blueprint 
in these films. Like well, when you watch Top Gun yeah. Two, they didn't say anything negative about women. He had women in the fight. He had one in particular who was one of the fighter pilots. He just did a good damn story. You know what I mean? Go ahead. I mean, you do you you do that if you want to win, but if you don't want to win and you want to push an agenda, you do the other thing. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So to me, it's not about for some of the a lot of these films. It's not about winning because at this point they gotta know, they gotta know that they're gonna lose a good portion of the audience. I mean, mm-hmm. with all these. All these films that came out where they replaced a a a, a male uh, cast with a female cast, you know how they gender swapped a lot of these movies. None of them, none of them, none of them was successful. Mm-hmm. So they have to know at this point that this doesn't work, mm-hmm. but they don't care. They they mm-hmm. you know to them the agenda is more important than winning. Well, and you are the reason why we talked in, I think, my last show about why that happens, because the funding, you know, is the, is the priority. But well, they, they, they get tax breaks. They get tax breaks. Absolutely. Um, right. I'm going to go ahead and bring in. Um, let me see. So we had a couple of people that have been waiting. So we got Kobe, Shirley, uh, Black to uh, Defy and Dapper. Um, and so I'm going to let them kind of give a word. And uh, everybody else that I didn't mention uh, are my, are long timers, so you guys are gonna stay up and you can drop your thoughts uh, at any time. Let's go ahead and uh, get Kobe to drop a word in here. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, like the trailer just really messed me up. I did not like it. No, you didn't really see any prominent uh, warrior, black male warriors, black male warriors up in there. Uh, what messed me up about the first one, as you already mentioned, is that they gave. Shuri, his intelligence. That's one of the things I loved about T'Challa was yeah. that he was a smart dude. He was trained to think four or five steps ahead of right. his enemy, and we didn't we didn't see that. That really made me mad, you know, because that was I love you know whether it's like hardware or other black characters. I love seeing the intelligence. That's the thing that gets me. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, seeing that messed me up, and then seeing you know just the trailer, just them. Just like the woman king, King Valkyrie, just the continuation of, okay, let's move aside black male authority. Let's move that aside and let's just focus on black women empowerment. You know, it's just, and yes, I've seen all over people like uh, Shuri was to, was Black Panther the comic. I was like, okay, but people want to see T'Challa. Nobody wants to see Shuri as Black Panther. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, T'Challa has been Black Panther, you know, all the, you know, all these years, all these decades, he has so many storylines. People want to see those storylines um, adapted into live action. Nobody, <laughs> no, nobody, no real comic book fans I know is really going to go to see Black Panther movie and say, I want to see Shuri as Black mm-hmm. Panther, you know? But yeah. Well, they're trying to bring in, I think, a whole generation of girls and they're hoping that they can, you know, kind of, uh, they, they can really maximize that. And I think they kind of look at it like, well, we already got the boys, so let's focus on the girls. But they're actually losing the boys and men in the midst of all this, and they don't seem to care. And that's one of the interesting things about this. But does anybody else want to respond to Kobe's uh, Kobe's thoughts? Kobe, I'm going to take you down, but I appreciate yeah. you coming up, man. Yeah, I'll go. All right, uh, thank you. It's actually, what to, to that point, it's actually counterproductive why they bought Marvel and Star Wars in the first place. Mm. Your The objective of buying those properties or those IPs was to bring in the boy fan base. Mm. Now you're going against that, and lesson learned because like i like i said on artisan show i'm a power ranger fan i'm a 90s kid so i go to watching power rangers i watched them screw up power rangers when they tried to do it with them they bought power rangers from saban they didn't know what to do with it and so they messed it up as saban when he bought it back and put it on nickelodeon he said disney screwed it up so i'm already was like i'm already sour but let me say this real quick before you add on I've been sour on the way on the black representation of the male hero since the beginning, starting with War Machine and the BS that you heard with Terrence Howard. Right. Okay, so I've already been soured on that character that you've already had to recast him. Secondly, then Don, with Don Cheadle, you cripple him. Then you kind of you kind of make his character a jokey joke in Iron Man 2 when he does the tank buster thing and it's like a joke. Then you make him Iron Patriot. Then Falcon, you look at Falcon, you take him and give him Captain America's thing. So basically saying that the only way he can be a legitimate superhero is if you give him the white boy stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't I have a problem with that. 
third. Well, along with the fact that all of them are neutered and have no you know relationships at all. But go ahead. Third, yeah, thank you. Third, you got Luke Cage. I don't really want to mm-hmm. see season three because by the time you end season two, you're going to try to turn him into a crime boss almost. Oh, to where yeah. you have, if you look at that, then you have you have Goliath, Lawrence Fishburne. You, he's kind of a semi villain in Ant Man, and you got Ant Man, uh, uh, Hank, Hank Pym hating on him because he can get bigger. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a problem for me. Then you got Nick Fury. Oh my God, we thinking that he lost his eye in this big battle, and what do you do? You make a joke out of it. He get his eye, you get his, you get his eyes crashed out by a cat, a space cat, an alien, whatever. And then right. lastly, you got Black Panther. Black Panther. First off, as everybody pointed out, you rob him of his intelligence of who he is in the comics because that's what most of us, especially us black men, love him because he was an intelligent dude who could fight and he was the king and he could do all that. Then you don't even do him have to do the respect of recasting the character because his brother said that he stated that before he passed. The move on, move on with this character. So I have been having a problem since the way they've done right. all of these black characters. Right. Period. So. Right. This doesn't surprise me one bit. Upset mm-hmm. me, yes, but it doesn't surprise me. Right. I appreciate it. Anybody want to uh, respond? Absolutely. Uh, he had a, uh, hi, Black Suit of Fire here. Thank you for having me on. Uh, my man, he hit on all the points I wanted to make, but I'll make a few more. Uh, I'll go a little macro. Anybody see Terminal List? Yes. Okay. Terminal List. Yes. Uh, amazing. Amazing show why was it amazing because it was great storytelling you could it was believable even the parts that weren't believable furthermore they didn't try to emasculate i'm gonna gonna close off everybody because i'm I'm hearing all kinds of background Uh, i don't know who's coming but uh hold on one second i think i accidentally turned off Okay, actually, okay, actually I didn't finish it. It, was it me? It, it, it might be. Yeah, because okay. I'm here. Okay, I'm coming back, so. okay uh, I was just going to say they didn't try and emasculate any of the men. Furthermore, when they did have the female character there, she was an addition and not a subtraction. She okay. didn't take away from the story, she added to it. Uh, thirdly, you know, I. I you know, when I saw the trailer to Black Panther, you know, I, I had to turn it off because I couldn't stomach it. You know, it, it's just I knew it was coming. It was like seeing the bomb at Hiroshima. You saw it. I was just waiting for the aftershock because I knew I was going to hate it immediately because I knew exactly what they, where they were going. They were going to emasculate men. They were going to spit on the grave of uh, Chad Wick, Wick Bozeman. And then none of the male or any uh, or black male uh, counterparts in any of this movie were going to be able to do anything, hold a candle to the <laughs> the power of the female. It's insane. And uh, my last point, you know, Blue Marvel. I'm a huge Blue Marvel fan, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I know it's coming. I know I know they're going to make a movie about it, but when they do make a movie about it, they're going to emasculate him too. You know, he was married to a white woman in one of the arcs in the story and they're going to probably make her more powerful than him some way they're going to marry sue a, a sister in there too like sherry and he's gonna she's gonna take over his mantle all types of stuff they're going to make him either an old man or a stupid uh emasculated unintelligent black man who did all these things in yesteryear but now it's the year of the woman and that's just the way it is man unfortunately and uh, to someone else's point about Disney properties, uh, you made somebody made a point about Power Rangers. Power Rangers I, I thought I was the only one who remembered when Disney bought Power Rangers. I mean, I, I ask everybody, I, everybody acts like that never happened. But I'm saying, yeah, they did, and they ruined it. And they ruined everything, just like they ruined Star Wars. They ruined this. And they don't care, man. They, they will... They will Burn the ship down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This um, I got sent this today. Media. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna kind of catch you, Black Suit Defy. I might. I'm actually gonna have to take you down, brother. But I appreciate your comments. Thank you for coming up. 
Well, this was actually something I got earlier today uh, in my social media, and you can actually see, um, you know, this is supposed to be uh, Blue Marvel, and there's and, and people are speculating that uh, this will be the brother to play him. If I'm not mistaken, he's a Canadian actor named Shamir Anderson. Um, and so he's going to be pe playing uh, Kevin Grouveau's, uh Blue Marvel. So we'll see if that's the case. Anybody want to add in on this? Anybody have any thoughts about this? I'm sad and disappointed because I already know it's not going to be what we know Adam Bashir to be, especially when I was late on Adam Bashir. I found out him through catching up on comics and i was like oh wow that's cool this is an awesome character so once i learned about the character and his origin i was like yeah this is this is definitely somebody who we can really get behind and look up to but they are not going to do that character justice anybody else i agree i'm afraid for what they're going to do to blade and blade's one of my favorite characters we were yeah, talking about that earlier blade, today man. yep I'm uh, sorry. talking about they're gonna it. make him. They're either gonna. I, I'm gonna be convinced. They're just gonna make him gay. They're they're gonna. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna do something. I, grew up. They. It, it's like the doc said. They're gonna get a bunch of these non-comic book reading motherfuckers, non-caring about the legacy of the story. Don't give a damn about it. It's like insert black man here. He's interchangeable. Kill him off. This, that, and the fourth. I'm just convinced that that DC and Marvel can't write a black character to save their life. Mm -hmm. But I will make this comment. Can I be heard at the moment? Yeah. I will make this comment that um, I feel like the reaction to the uh, to the movie has been fairly swift, and this is just the trailer. So I will point to some pros in that because I think the conversation continues to happen where we're saying, hey, we're not okay with what we're seeing. We're not okay with, with, with kind of what's happening here. And I think that's, that's, that's something to think about in terms of what happens going forward, because I think at least, um, at the very least, I mean, this, this isn't something that's just concentrated to just, uh, um, just MCU, right? I mean, I was just talking to a friend about what they're trying to do with Bond and that whole franchise. Right. Right, and, right. Right. And how a lot of people are saying, hey, we'll we'll just stop watching it. Right. Like we won't tune in like at all. Right. And, and I think you're going to be hard pressed to find a lot of young women who are going to say, hey, um, I aspire to be 007 like you did with young boys. Right. So, so, so I think they're 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 going to run into a situation where most of us may just tune out. We may find other avenues. Mm -hmm. um, I have a young son. I'm I'm trying to turn him on to other, uh, some other comics, right? So I'm out there looking for other avenues for him, but I'll just turn it off. Well, right? you know, the thing about yeah. it is they're saying that anime or or, uh, or whoever's I mean, somebody's background noise is really doing a lot right now. Um, but when it comes to uh, some of the stuff that's selling, um, it's not it's not the American comics that we're familiar with. I mean, the stuff that's going through the roof. Is um, I'm forgetting the name for it, but you know, Japanese comics. Somebody correct me. Manga, manga. manga that, that's the stuff, that's the stuff that's selling, and even some of the non-traditional stuff. So we know Eric July is coming out with the Ripperverse. Last I checked, he was over three million in terms of people that have invested. So you see an investment by the fans for something different. Um, I just got hit to. Um, uh, uh, Gendy Tartavosky's, uh, I'm mispronouncing his name, I'm sure. Uh, this is the guy who made Samurai Jack. So he, he has a new show starting its second season called Primal that I just started watching that is really good. So you have, I think what DC and Marvel are kind of initiating is a blowback where many of the fans who have been really dismissed are finding interest in areas, in other areas. And, and kind of like, you know, what uh, Dapper was just saying a second ago, they're trying to even introduce their kids to comics and they're willing to go to places they've never really gone before because there's nothing for them at Marvel and DC. Anybody else want to respond to that? Yes, me. What? Um, when you was talking about DC, um, they had scrapped on um, Cyborg and they never say why. You said they scrapped Cyborg? Yeah. He's supposed to have his own movie. Oh, yeah. And never hear about it again. 
Oh. Uh, I think they fired him because of that guy that played a flash. He started something. No, it was because all the stuff that Ray Fisher was saying behind the scenes about how they were being racist and stuff like that and reducing his role that Warner Brothers at that time, the people that was the head of it, you know, basically retaliated against his ass and blackballed him out. So that's why he wasn't getting his movie. Yeah, just like um oh um, what's that show I used to look at? Black Lightning. They didn't have to take that off. That was good. It was getting ratings. Mm. No, but they was focused on games. It off like way too late. <laughs> that movie, that show, that oh, show was terrible. I was, I was, I was okay. It just no, didn't no, need to focus not. on. Games. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Shirley. I got to tell you this. All of yeah. us here grew up with Black Lightning in the comics. Black Lightning was the version that we saw in DC. How the way we grew up with yeah, Black Panther. Yeah, I know. I remember but that. Here, but here's the thing which you have to understand what they did to Black Lightning. They neutered him in that show too because they made right. both of his daughters be disrespectful to him and yes. he moved to the back seat. And even as he progressed as being the principal of the school, being a superhero and also trying to save the city, his wife, his ex-wife and his daughters showed him disrespect Yes, I remember but even that. by him being a hero, even by him doing whatever that he was doing and he whatever that he did, it just showed as a black man you could still never get any respect. Yeah, he's holding the world on his shoulders and is showing how the way black men, whatever you do, it doesn't matter when you come home, you still get disrespect. And the funny thing was, if it wasn't for him, his daughters would never have their powers and they would never have the lineage of becoming superheroes. Well, if it yeah. wasn't for him, his daughters would have been dead in the first episode. Also, That's true. They, let me add this uh, too. They uh, also, uh, real quick, let me add this and then okay. I'll let you go, Shirley. They also presented that freaking morality question that they always want to throw on black men as opposed to the white superheroes that, that they did in both Luke Cage and, in D and the Black Lightning show. The white superheroes can go kill people with, and it'd be for the greater good. But when it comes to the black superheroes, there's always this question around morality because, you know, you got to be the quote unquote Gordon Good brother or the soulful saint. So that was one of my biggest problems where you had his basically his white handler going as far as to trying to get his wife and children to stop him from uh killing the killing the guy who killed his father. But then when it, when he, when he comes to one of his former Eight partners that he was a secret agent with, he kills him with no questions asked because he's going to expose that the drug that they put in the community gave everybody superpowers. So I have a problem with that right there. Them making it to where us black men, we always got to have this morality uh, shit that we have to deal through. And so, not only that, they, up the, like, they always have to put something about gay in a current black show. Like they, they really right. have to buy Yeah, like that Tom Swift. Yeah, they went in depth about his daughter being gay, and I'm, I'm convinced, uh, like we're never gonna see too many black relationships on on screen anymore. And I'm just like, God damn it! Can you stop with well, the you'll see, you'll, 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 see, you'll see black woman relationships. You just won't see black see male relationships. I'm gonna tell you, I tuned out of that show early. Black Black yeah, Lightning. Me too. I I tuned out of that show extremely early. <laughs> And it's shot, shot well. well. I, I love how I, I love how it looks, but I tuned out of that early, man. I, you know, I couldn't do it. Okay, now yeah, I should say that um, the chat the chat is going crazy. They they've been coming up with titles for Black Panther two that have been ridiculous. But I'm gonna go ahead and let Shirley make her closing point. I want to say one more thing. Let King Dwayne get in here. Go ahead. I want to say one more thing. Um, do y'all remember Spencer for Hire? Yeah. Yeah, there's a guy called Hawk. He had his own show. Uh huh. They didn't right. like that because he was a black man and he was saving people, white people. Mm -hmm. And they cut his show off too. One season. Yep. Yeah. Excuse me. They gave it one season. Yeah. 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 They ain't like him being a hero. But but and at least with that, you got the redemption. Uh, uh you know, of the actor. You know, yeah. with, with uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, but yeah, I used to watch Hawk. Hawk was the man. Yeah, I liked it too. But yeah, I Hawk wish they good. didn't take that off. Yeah, 
I agree. But I, I am disappointed of Black Panther too. I'm disappointed in that. Uh, don't worry, Shirley. I'm coming out with a show called A Man Called Falk. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you coming up, Shirley. Excuse me. Excuse me. I said I appreciate you coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, let me see. Okay. okay. Now, okay. Now, Dwayne is here. Found hook Found up. Hook up. Uh, are you able to hear me well? Yeah. We hear you. Okay. I want to say good evening to everybody. I appreciate you, Dr. T, for having me on. Um, I actually sent a picture to your Instagram. I hope you get it. Um, but someone mentioned back in Civil War how just how masculine and how powerful we saw Black Panther as he jumped on the scene and just his smarts and everything. You know, he was supposed to be like Bruce Wayne on another level. And, you know, from what I, I could tell, um, you know, I'm not going to try to act like I'm some comic guru because i'm not um i remember when i was younger i i would have different comics all the way down to the ninja turtles but at some point i got away from that um mm -hmm. but i did keep up with a lot of things that came out and when black panther came on the scene i was happy to see a so-called black man you know who you know was able to get that spotlight and we had our superhero so to speak um and I do agree that I started to see throughout the movies as each phase started to go on, you started to see things diminish with him and certain characters like that. And I remember uh, there was a guy by the name of Chronicles of Judah. He, uh, he had a picture and in this picture, there was all the women superheroes from um, Endgame that were in that final war scene, the, like the main stars there was a scene of them on the set all sitting around the table and the brother noted and he pointed out, this is the real end game. And, mm -hmm. and so it made me think about when you guys were talking earlier in the show about how it's like there, there is a clear indication and a clear agenda where it seems like they are trying to push this, this new thing where they're just trying to, you know, take the masculinity away. And so, I sent that picture to you. I hope you're able to see it on your Instagram to okay. get a picture of what I'm saying. Uh, I just wanted to get on here and point that out because you do kind of see how they're just, they just let it's time for the, the women to take over, so to speak. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, okay. No, I appreciate that. I'm going to take you down, King Dwayne, but I appreciate you coming up, man. Uh, does anyone want to respond to that? It's a copy and play that they're trying to kill masculinity. I mean, look at it. Not just masculinity, but black masculinity in particular. We're not allowed to get the girl. We're not allowed to be the commander to make the decisions. We're not allowed to, we're not allowed to be a maverick. What's, remember, we gotta be humble. Mm -hmm. We're not allowed, what's the, you, you, you got your PhD. What is a maverick, doctor? <laughs> you talking about a rogue? You talking about somebody that's out there doing something different? Yeah, what we allowed to be the maverick? The only time we're allowed to be the maverick if it's something the other the world could benefit from. Mm. We can't be our own men and have our own destiny charted out for us by ourselves. Right, right. we have to be in service to everybody else. We can't say, you know what? Screw you. I'm gonna build my Wakanda. I don't you know what it is, Charles? You're that super conquer, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's funny because yeah, it's because I had a I had a conversation with a with a young lady. She's a from who from my job. She was like, What's a what's a king without a queen? Still a motherfucking king. Like, right. <laughs> and she was like, Well, you know, you're right, you're right. I said, What I said, when do y'all go out there and conquer land? Well, y'all, 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 y'all get a flat tire. The world ended. <laughs> you know, bro, I've seen brothers out there with cancer as police officers who damn near walk to their deathbed. And y'all, y'all get a hangnail. Signal thirteen, officer down. Get out of here. It's it's, a, it's an agenda of stealing away your masculinity and destroying the warrior spirit in men in particularly black men 
they, they're not gonna get any, they're not gonna make no money from it you know um you know so so they you know that that whatever the whatever the end game of this is no pun intended whatever the end game of this is it, it's not gonna be um you know any financial uh gain from it you know i don't i don't know what what Disney's big move is with, with, with all of this stuff, you know, whether this the stuff on the app or you know, the stuff on, uh, you know, in, in the theaters and, and things like that. I, I, I don't know, but again, this is, they're going to lose a lot of money behind his head's going to roll. You know, um, it was something else I wanted to say, but it, it escapes me right now. So I'm gonna let the next person speak. Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to let Dapper give his thoughts, and then I'm going to let each of you give your closing thoughts, and I'm going to end on Artisan. Um, so let me go ahead and, uh, and so Dapper, any give us your, your, your any other thoughts you want to share? Um, <clears throat> I think we've already kind of sort of talked about it um, in a couple different molds here, right? But ultimately, I think at least when you just look at MCU, um it's 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 clear that there's an agenda being pushed right like that 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 shouldn't be open debate anymore right but i think that the the bigger question or at least i guess there are a couple of questions first being what will be the fallout post um this sort of box office flop because i think that is what's going to happen um my experience tells me that they'll find a way to try to blame black men that's that's what they love to do um, and we'll, we'll have to figure out how to kind of <clears throat> have kind of a unified voice to kind of talk about or kind of voice our displeasure and our grievances and, 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 and talk about what we are having an issue with going forward. But I think the other piece is, right, is, um, and I, and I kind of spoke to this earlier, right, but it's, it's this tearing down of this kind of, this, this sort of buffer between what we deem to be a biological construct and what is a social construct, right? And I think they are trying to basically get rid of masculinity as a, or, or, or just the idea of being a man and, and, and having certain biological impulses as a construct and now make everything completely open to question, right? Mm -hmm. Something that is, that is able to change the will, something that can be substituted, um, mm -hmm. Certainly, Dr. Johnson can probably uh, can 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 certainly speak more to this, but it's 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 becoming very apparent that they just kind of want to be able to kind of put things in and take things out, and 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 that's going to have disastrous consequences, right? And people like myself, um, who who don't agree with that, we're going to check out, right? And 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 so the last thing that I'll just say is, um, I think it's kind of on us to kind of find these other mediums, these other avenues to kind of expose our children to. Um, to kind of continue with 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 what we believe to be the correct way to kind of approach um, not only just the idea or um, kind of the concept of creativity when it comes to kind of superheroes and all these kind of things, but you know everything doesn't necessarily have to be completely and utterly um, have some kind of like leering agenda at like at the heart of it, right? Like just just let superheroes be superheroes, right? Like let Black Panther be Black Panther. Like you don't have to have this whole feminine kind of movement behind it, right? Like everything doesn't need to be usurped by feminism, right? Like we 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 need to have right. those conversations more. And I kind of feel like that's that's where we're going to eventually get to. Um, but it's going to take some time. Um so so so, so yeah so thanks for having me on appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. Thanks for coming up man. Um, oh, let me see. All right. So, uh, anybody want to start it off? Closing thoughts about this? Anything else you want to bring up? Let's go with Malika since we haven't heard too much from you, brother. Uh, I'm glad you had this, brother, because I was knocked out and I woke up and I was like, oh, shit, Doc's on. He's talking about it. <laughs> and I said, oh, all my boys is up here. So, <laughs> I'm glad that you spoke on this because I said this on Artisans. I said, I hope Dr. T does this. So thank you for answering my prayers. Oh, man. Appreciate it. I you. think Chadwick Boseman heard the prayer and put it in your head and put it down here. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to be real. This is mm -hmm. some bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, when I saw this, me and all you brothers, I saw the, the trailer. 
And I just start looking at it and I just start shaking my head and everybody was saying, Oh, this is beautiful. I said, man, yeah. if you put a bowl around a turd, it's still a turd. Right. Right. And I don't care how great and beautiful Ryan Krugler and how he can make it look all great and have people all dressed in white and they're showing, you know, murals of Chadwick Boseman. I said, but you know, when I saw that mural, you know what I thought of? I thought of the mural of George Floyd. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I said, okay, what does that mean to you? Just because you're trying to show something and you're putting a mural up of something, George Floyd was still killed off in a terrible way. The way they're making this out, you're still killing off the image of Chad Bozeman and of Black Panther that we grew up with. I don't care if you're going to put Shuri at the end. You're not right. showing any strong masculine roles except for Namor. I'm not disrespecting the Mexican or the Aztec um, culture. That's cool. But mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm a Black man first. Mm -hmm. Where is my representation? Where is our representation of a strong masculine black men? Winston Duke is not that. They're going to show Winston Duke as the buck. Mm. Okay. Where is the representation of a strong, mentally strong, physically, spiritually strong black man that we saw as, that we saw both in Killmonger and in T'Challa because I was saying to um, Artisan yesterday we both saw two great men now they did something great with that first Black Panther movie you didn't see Killmonger as a villain you saw him as an anti-hero but also you saw him as a man that was showing his rage and his pain that a lot of black men went through and you felt for him but now we're just seeing, now they're showing like Riri and you're seeing her and you know, the Gap movement and you're seeing all the stuff and you're seeing the Dora Milaje be, you're seeing all, all this imagery and all this stuff that you're seeing, no strong black image. And this is where you're gonna see the, yeah, girl, we're showing you. And like how artists have said, Black Panther. But we're quiet forever. Right, right, right. But there's no representation for men. And they're saying, well, we as, there's no representation of black men. Like how you said, there's no representation of strong black men in media, period. Yeah. They're, 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 they're phasing us out. But they're now they're phasing this other mess in. And that's why I'm saying this is some bullshit. I don't care. I love seeing Angela Bassett. I don't care how she's going to give this regal appearance and she gives this great speech. Mm -hmm. that, that, great speeches don't mean anything to me. Show me representation of a man. When when I saw Luke Cage, I felt something. When I saw Black Panther, I felt something. When I saw Avery Brooks 30 years ago right. up against Robert Urich, Right. I felt something when Me I too. saw Avery Brooks in his own. I felt it when I saw him as Benjamin Sisko. I felt something as a little kid when I saw Richard Roundtree as Shaft. Right, I felt something that evoked in me. Right, I f I saw a man that I wanted to be. Exactly. When I saw when I saw Lavera Burton. On Star Trek, I felt something. When I saw LeVar Burton on Reading Rainbow, mm -hmm. I felt something. Mm -hmm. I, when you see yourself being represented, when I saw John Stewart in an afro with no mask on as Green Lantern, I felt something. Right. Right. When you take that away, you have a son who's 17 years old. At least he saw, and you tell him, like, son, this is what I've been waiting for for 40 some odd years. And I'm glad I can see it with you. But now he sees it as taken away. It's like, now you see this BS as a commercial. And well, you can see. Well, no, you're right. It's just it, what further complicated that. I remember taking him to the theater to see Panther. By the time we were watching it, I was leaning more on Killmonger than I was T'Challa. 
yeah. which was which was a split that I kind of low key resented because I didn't, you know, I wanted to just be in support of a hero who I like reading about. But also the way they, you know, again, the way they wrote the story and what they did to T'Challa was more upsetting to me than just the split between him and Killmonger. So all of that really frustrated me. And truth be told, my son got more out of more of a kick out of uh, into the into the Spider Verse, and yes. um, you know, it, it, and and Miles, he he got more out of that than he but did. But can I tell you something? Even with that. I hate it, even though that, okay, he's an awkward teenager. Mm -hmm. When he's around Spider-Gwen, he's still the bumbling idiot. Yeah. And I'm like, come on. Like, when they show... And they're still afraid of his sexuality, so he can't even so much as kiss her, right? That fear of black male sexuality in film, we've seen that for decades. And and it gets me like... it, it, It just pisses me off to the point of like, like Paul Mooney would say, black people, we he had a joke about it. He said, But black people, we can't have shit. But I take it even further. I said, Black men, we can't even have shit. When you have a guy who is possibly the most powerful man in the MCU, and I'm not just talking about raw power, but like he he's the king of a country, yeah. high technological. He's been raised to be a king now he's gone but there's no show of masculinity at all even in when you see it only show of masculinity that you see is of namor mm-hmm. and i'm like damn so the guy that is supposedly to kill him in the beginning is the only show of true masculinity mm-hmm. well, that's, a, that's just a that's just a slap that's like a double slap in the face that okay I can understand a man dies in battle, but then we're going to show the other guys taking over. But then there's not going to be any show of any other strong masculine energy of this man who has the mantle until later on we're going to give it to a any sister. show of any other. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to need to uh, come at Beastly Nerd next, but um, I really appreciate you coming up, Malika. Thank you. Thank you. All right, brother. See. So go ahead, Beastly Nerd. Give us your thoughts. All right. So my thoughts are this: it's this. These are just m- m- other versions, and I said this before of Disney princesses. If you look at them, that's all they are. They're, it's Disney's property. They can do what they want with it, and so now they've decided to make just superhero versions of the Disney princesses, or even with Star Wars. Those are all Disney princesses, and so. I noticed that when I've gone through in the recent Disney films, just not just the superhero films, just like all of their stuff, like I'm having to sit back. I'll even take it out of when you look at that Aladdin movie they did. Look at what they did to that character in that movie to where they brung that character down and they elevated Jasmine. She had like a whole solo singing moment to where they were talking about making her sultan. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. A female sultan at that time? Wouldn't have happened. Somebody's head would have been got chopped off. So the pro- so you're just seeing this all around. This let's bringing down the characters of the male characters to uplift the female characters, and then we want to celebrate. I said, but how is it really strong and empowering when you're undermining the power of the male characters? So that's just a big problem for me. And so right. with this Black Panther two, I I don't know, man. It's like. Hopefully that guy, the uh, what's the what's the brother that we showed that didn't have a title under his name? We didn't know what his character. Hopefully he is somewhat of a replacement. Heck, I was thinking, well, it's the multiverse. Let's bring in Cole Tiger, mm. something like that. That's a character ain't nobody thought of. Cole Tiger or something. But don't just not recast that character. Recast him. Like I said, we're getting all the. We got thirteen different Superman television film video game we got all these versions of superman you mean tell me we can't get a new version of the black panther come on now right, seriously right, right right but that's all i got on that that's my closing thoughts all right man well, i appreciate you coming up thank you uh let me go to uh marcus i guess we lost charles marcus give us your closing thoughts about this man 
All right. So, you know, aside from the things that we spoke on, you know, with, uh, <clears throat> you know, Disney, Disney's portrayal of uh, black men in Marvel movies overall, you know, we're, we're asexual, we're mm. other sexual, we're this, we're that, you know, we're, we're never that guy. Um, you know, even with, you know, with T'Challa, I guess, being the closest thing to being that guy, um, <clears throat> the way, you know, aside from that, uh, looking at it from th from that uh, point of view, the other thing that I see is like you know when you look at that trailer, it it, it gives me this whole BLM narrative of you know what black culture has become you know has become this strong black woman you know uh, dead black martyr right. uh, man thing you know what I mean where you right. know it's like okay like you look at the cover of Rolling Stone and you see the the black girl with a fist in the air with the baby and you know you see all these strong black women um running the the the, the community or the culture uh with all these you know because all, all these black men are dead and you know this this oh we love black men and this and that is like what he said earlier about T'Challa's mural reminding him of George Floyd um we we celebrate strong black women and dead black men Right. We don't we don't celebrate black men in life. We celebrate them in death. And that's what our culture has become. So when people see that trailer, a lot of these guys are, you know, they're not having a problem with it because that's what they're resonating with a lot of them. You know what I mean? You know, they're looking at these black women like, you know, uh oh, in memory of rest in peace this dead black man that we all loved and blah, 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 blah. You understand? So yeah, the, the whole idea of them taking advantage of the death of the actor makes a, a, a whole lot of sense when you're using that narrative. Mm -hmm. um, Kugler is the worst choice. I agree with that. I, I've, and again, I've said that from the beginning, you know, cause I've read a lot of the interviews that uh, he did, you know, during the, you know, before the first movie came out and after it came out. And um, I just, again, I, you know, whether it be the Marvel franchises, the, you know, the Marvel movies, the, the Star Wars franchise, you know, Disney uh, as a whole, I mean, you know, their portrayal of black men, you know, and their agenda at this point. I mean, I don't know how much money, more money they plan to lose uh, mm -hmm. pushing this because they're not going to win with it. Earlier, you mentioned the Top Guns and all those other movies that are winning because they're not going this route but uh they're 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 sacrificing a lot of uh capital to right this agenda yeah so yeah so that's that's pretty much it for me man and uh thanks for having me in here and y'all support the keep it 100 channel uh go over there and 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 you know like the channel become a member uh subscribe and i appreciate you coming up man thank you most definitely. Peace. Peace. Brother Artisan, close us out, man. Give us a give us a perspective on how to handle this and what you recommend uh, should happen. Well, um, thank you for having me up here and, and and actually doing the stream on this because like I told you before, I really do respect your opinion and your perspective on it. I see things one way. I'm not expecting everybody to see it that way but I'm really welcoming of hearing other opinions and how other people see it. Cause you bring a different, different lens to it when you look at it mm -hmm. and all the brothers that came up here made a lot of good um, points, a uh, hell of a lot of good points on this movie. That's really just making me think, damn, it might bomb. You know, I was thinking it, it might yeah. float itself, but yeah. given the sentiment out there, if you just taking a, you know, using this as a sample size is like, Nobody really going to see this movie, but a bunch of, um, you know, pale folks. Like <laughs> so. Well, you know, it, the, they got a lot of black women and girls interested in the first one, so that I think mm -hmm. they're banking on that, and well, that, yeah. we'll see how that goes. Yeah, well, that's that was the reason why I think you're seeing Black Panther two going the way it's going because. Right. So many people got jazzed about seeing the door melage and all that stuff up there. They just wanted to take it after that. You know how black women is. You got something, you know, you having a good time with. They got to take that now if somebody like it. You know, that's that's, that's mine. You know, that's the little sister thing, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like you, you got a nice toy. Everybody like it. I need to have that. So, um, being upset about this whole thing, my main thing to say in things people should do is write your own material, please. If you're a black man out there, you got some two pennies to rub together in a creative idea, write your own stuff and put it out there. Because to be honest with you, I'm tired of having to deal with two different companies that's both giving me BS in both ears. Right. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of that personally. Like you talked about Eric July and his, in the Ripperverse. Why did I send him money? Because I want to see something else. I really do. I'm so serious about seeing something else. I don't care who putting it out. Let me know you got a book coming out. <laughs> or, black, or Black Sands, Black Sands. Or black Sands yeah, he should have shut his mouth. But even even him, even support him. And and, it, and if you can name anybody else, you recommend, please do, man. Um, Fracture Comics, my homeboys, uh, Joe Thompson and Chris Adams, definitely pick up their stuff. They do um, American manga because they're big anime and manga heads, and they do American style manga. And it's good art and it's really good stories. Writer, both writers, both film school guys. My boy Chris Adams works in films to this day. He worked on, I told him it wasn't a ringing endorsement, but he worked on The Matrix 4. But, <laughs> you know, yeah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't tell yeah. you. Now we dressed him down about that because he came on the show. So we dressed him down about that. <laughs> but he got to share his experience on it. So experience is experience. But do your own stuff. I mean, for real. Um, it, is, it is my belief that the pen on the black male creativity has never gone dry. So mm-hmm. all you need to do is actually put it out there. And it's easier than it's ever been right now to produce and put out your own book. My boy Joe works a regular job. He puts out his own book. He at least got four trays to his name right now. That makes him a published author. Mm-hmm. Nice. Ripper is now a published author. As soon as you, you've already bought the book, if you bought it, as soon as you get it, he's a published author. Right. That's an accolade that not everybody can have. It's easier to do now than ever. Put your own stories out, please, because you're going to get more of this. And yeah. like Dr. T, I walked out of Thor 4 and I was like, what, what, did, what, yeah. what did I just watch? Yeah. And I was really just at, overly apprehensive about Black Panther coming. I thought, I know I'm about to get more of the same thing. I'm about to get the same BS again. And then they dropped the trailer. I was like, oh, damn, it's worse than I thought. Worse, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's really... And it's confusing it because the cinematography might be great. The mm-hmm. special effects might be great. Even some of the themes. But then you know the core story is, is absent. The primary group that Panther was designed to, to attract. Yeah. Focus on. Yeah, totally, totally divorced to that. I mean, and this is the biggest case. You guys relating it to BLM is exactly what it is. It's a spring, another springboard off a dead black man yes. to catapult somebody else into making a bunch of money off of him. And it ain't another black man. Yes. Now, I'm hoping from what you showed on IMDb, I'm hoping that that brother is actually coming in as some multiversal um T'Challa from another universe. That would that would be a big twist and w- would make for me it, it would be something worth seeing in the movie. It'd be something worth seeing because other than that, I'm not seeing anything worth seeing. Not even Namor. But I'm really mean? not even jazzed about Namor because at this rate, the way it looks, I can wait till December and watch the Avatar and see the same thing. So wow. I'm, I'm really not, really not. <laughs> no. Oh, but but the thing on the Black Panther, even if that dude is a, another, you know, multiversal Panther, I would like to see a named actor that I'm excited about play that role. I'm not excited yeah. about a guy I've never heard of before, but, you know, the idea of the T'Challa Panther still being alive is cool. So, yeah. Well, for me, I'm, I, w- I would really like Marvel and Kevin Feige to go away from getting named actors because my, my thinking on this is – the first 10 years of Marvel worked well when you had a bunch of actors, not all of them really well-named, like Chris Hemsworth wasn't really well-known before he got that Thor role. And because of that, he's been the one that's hung around the longest because he wasn't asking for the most money up front. Every time you get a named actor, you got to pay them more money up front. Like, I know. I'm going to say this again. Ask Taika Waititi where the rest of the money is for Thor 4. Right. Where's the rest of the money? I think he pocketed that. I, don't I think he pocketed I don't it think too. It went all to Christian Bale. Huh? I don't think it went all to Christian Bale or Russell Crowe. Where's the rest of the money, dude? Because it wasn't in the special effects, and it wasn't in the script, and it wasn't in the acting. So where's the money? But you I know, know, 
I will say this, when, when the Avengers thing was finally just starting to kick up, there was a whole big push about how na- how big the name should be. That's one of the problems with comic book movies going back to, you know, Christopher Reeve era. If you're going to do a superhero movie, Christopher Reeve wasn't well known. You know, as soon as you start getting big names like Tom Cruise, it's going to kill the budget and they're not going to be as interactive with future projects. But they hit the sweet spot and they found actors who weren't supreme like extremely well known but they weren't brand new either like i'd seen yeah, chris evans in a few things i'd seen yeah. robert downey jr i grew up off him you know what i mean me too me too um, right even, that's even why i was fine with him because they were more they were more b-list in, in that right. sense they're more b-list you you know their name but they can't command a high salary right, right. and i would want that because then it makes them it makes the studio focus on the story more rather than Look, we got this big name actor in this movie. What difference mm-hmm. does it make if the movie's crap? If, yeah. Look, Angelina Jolie is a big name actor. Selma Hayek is a big name actor. They was in some movies. How did those movies do? Russell Crowe is a big name actor. Christian Bale was a big name actor. How did that movie do? It's not helping them any. That's that's the mistake they made back in the nineties when they was trying to do these movies, where they had low name actors but shitty shitty scripts. Look, work on the script. Work on the story. Right. I don't need a big name actor in it. I, I'm I'm really not with these big name actors coming to these franchises now anyway, because they only come in because they know that's where the money is. But, but before they them, was thumbing their nose at it. But I don't need them to be huge. But I'm not personally as interested in seeing no name actors. You know, I want to see people, and I and I do like when they pull people from previous, you know, uh, films or other films like you know. Spider-Man was great because you brought in Spider-Mans from different universes. You really can't do that with Panther. I mean, the closest they can get with that is have Jimon Wansu, uh, what's his name, Jimon Hansu walk through from the animated. That really wouldn't translate, and I don't see him. No, I wouldn't see Jimon. Look, you, you, yeah. can, you can do John David Washington for me, and I'll buy him as Black Panther today. Okay, see, that's what I mean. That'll work. J.D. Wash show up, I'm down. He playing T'Challa, I'm down again. He could show up in a movie, and I'd be happy. Right? Okay. But he's not a super big name actor. He's he's headed movies, but he's not a big name actor. I uh, like, like I said, it never had to be big name, but I don't like yeah. brand new. But I do need to say this chat is going nuts. I'm gonna say, we're, yeah, we're broadcasting funny. this on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and on every channel I can possibly get Twitch. If you're not watching, you know, you need to see it on YouTube to really see these comments. These cats are having they're they're killing me. Yeah. <laughs> I've been throwing my jabs in too, but it's been <laughs> You're killing me right now. Look, look, MCU didn't call you guys about titles, titles for these movies, unfortunately, because there's been some good ones in there. Look, the shape but a heist, Black oh Panther 2, shape but a heist. Come on, man. Now, the one I saw was what Black Panther 2, Chico in the man. I'm like, bruh, <laughs> Chico in the woman. <laughs> they are killing it. They are killing, they killing me. Yeah, it's a girl. Yeah, whatever. But for me, that that's the main thing is that write your own stuff. I'm not gonna tell anybody to um, um, boycott or anything like that. That's that's not my thing. I know I have to go see it, and I want it, I have to see it because I don't like living in ignorance. So I know what what it is I'm talking about. When I come out the movie, you have to, you know, put a text in to Dr. Tia Son like. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I saw the movie. Uh, yeah. We got to talk. <laughs> you know? I look at I look at it like this: we do it so others don't have to. It, you exactly. know, if it's a good film, it will tell you. If it, it will tell you if it's a horrible one, and we'll tell you why, and you make your decision. But you know, you don't have to sit through that. Now, I will say we we also just saw Nope, and I want yes, you guys to check out Artisan MC's channel. He did he does his show every Sunday at eleven a.m. Pacific. He just did it, uh, you know, yesterday. Yeah, talked about hour, nope. Seven hour monster. <laughs> yeah, he'd, he'd be doing them long. He he just talked about nope. So check out his review of that. You know, I would say it's it's a film worth supporting. Um, so check it out if you haven't seen uh, Jordan Peele's Nope. Interesting film. Yeah, um, interesting film. You know, not definitely the best thing I've ever seen. Go ahead. What do you say? No, I said definitely go see us so we can talk about it. It was it was not us. Put it that way. If that will sell you on it, it wasn't us. <laughs> Not but I appreciate you coming up, man. Any closing thoughts? Anything you want to tell people? Because I want people to support what you're doing. And- um, uh, like Dr. T said, I do my um show Shop Talk Live every Sunday, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. 
um, Eastern Standard Time. I drop random videos during the week and live. So if you subscribe and click the bell, you'll hopefully get it when um, I go live and just share thoughts and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, you can check out the store. I do own a comic shop currently um, and stand up comics in uh, El Cerrito, California. You can check that out there. But other than that, just, you know, support black males and black male media wherever you find it. If you know some black brother that is actually doing comics or something like that, try to support him and buy his stuff and, and put the word out there so the rest of us can hear about it and support him. Because if for me, if Ripa can raise $3 million, that means there's people out there with money in hand to pay you for a book that you got out there. All you waiting on is the exposure so people know where to get it and where to find it. Put that information out there. We need to be helping each other more because otherwise we're going to keep getting crap like we're sitting here talking about right now. You got to write your own stuff and you got to get into these businesses and push these people out of there because they're not going to leave other than dynamite. <laughs> so, well, know, thank you, man. Appreciate it, Dr. T. Hey, man. Appreciate you uh, coming up. Appreciate you in general, man. Talk yep. to you soon, brother. Peace. Peace. Well, that's what it is, folks. Um, you know, I'm interested in reading more of the comments. Somebody said that before I go to bed, I should read through these because they're going to kill me. You're probably right. Um, I look forward to doing it. But also, uh, continue to give us your comments um, in the non-live chat. Let us know your thoughts about this and ideas you have. Uh, and, and definitely share media that you think we should be checking out that allows masculinity to not have to be undermined simply because it exists. Uh, so please go ahead and support along those lines. The only other thing I would add to this is, you know, we need to be unapologetic about challenging these critiques, these narratives, these things that are coming out that, that they seem to think that we're supposed to just take quietly. I want to hear more of us be outspoken about the issues we have with it. It's time to, because at the end of the day, especially in regard to the black male image, nobody is actually coming to the rescue of that for that, for the black male image, but black men and boys. We have to, as we're the only ones that are going to push this. Nobody else seems to care, especially consider, and they, and they don't have a problem eating off of our image for the sake of their own advancement at our expense. And I'm talking about within the black community and outside of it. But we got to be outspoken about the problems we have with this. And this also lets know, uh, you know future producers, future content creators know what standards we have and what things we're interested in seeing. So I hope we continue to have these kind of critiques and voice these issues. I'm going to continue to try and put them out as long as I can stomach watching some of this stuff, even when I really don't want to. But uh, that said, appreciate y'all watching the show. Uh, I will see y'all soon. Peace. I am here to tell you, brothers, we are not criminals by birth, perennial rapists, incapable intellects, man children, sperm donors, child support wellsprings, success objects, walking phalluses, ATM machines, lottery tickets, unintelligent henchmen, valueless assassins, pro bono mercenaries, unpaid bodyguards, interchangeable stepfathers, child discipline proxies, unpaid repairmen, workhorses, emotional tampons, or any other socially accepted dehumanizing stereotype. We are thinkers, inventors, innovators, leaders, fathers, and men. Embrace your humanity, know your worth, and extend your time, attention, and resources only to those who genuinely respect you. And remember, your worth is not defined by meeting other people's narcissistic, and selfish, and unrealistic needs. You define your worth. Peace.